finish that concluded the final ASA race in 1995 has stuck in our minds over the bitter winter. But now we're back with a new ASA AC Delco Challenge Series, which promises to pick up right where last year left off. So put another log on the fire, sit tight, and let's go racing! Welcome to the Hooters 300, live from Lakeland, Florida. It's the season opener of the 1996 American Speed Association racing season. Spring has sprung early here in Florida. We've beaten the calendar, melted the snow, and we're ready to go racing. Hello, everybody. I'm Ralph Shaheen, and welcome to Florida. And I don't know about you, but I am certainly ready for some great short track stock car racing. And I get to be your host for all the live coverage TNN is gonna bring you this year of the ASA series. Now there's a lot of things going on with this series as always is the case with the tour and we wanna bring you up to speed on everything. So stay right where you are, get your scorecards out because we're gonna bring you up to speed on everything in the next couple of minutes. But I gotta warn you, it's gonna move fast. So sit down, belt in and hang on. First, let's take a look at the thoroughbreds of the American Speed Association. These veterans will be battling to win it all in 1996. Posting a victory in only one DNF in 1995 and achieving more lead and lap finishes than any one, with the exception of 95 champion Brian Reffner, Gary St. Amant has a winning personality that complements his heartfelt driving style. The man who has possibly edged out St. Amant for most infectious ASA smile Brad Loney finished all 16 races in 95, 10 of which he crossed the stripe in the top 10. With a pole position and 12 top 10 finishes in 1995, Mike Miller promises even bigger and better things in 96. He could go all the way. After a slow start in 95, Tony Raines and the Baker Motorsports team gelled mid-season and came away with seven top five finishes. With the guidance of pit wizard Howie Ledow, big things might be in store for the 87 team. The winningest driver all time for the American Speed Association, the sneaker, Bob Seneker, topped the list with four poles in 95 and tied for tops with three victories. He is no stranger to the ASA throne. Now, if anyone knows what it takes to be the ASA champion, it's Mike Eddy. He has made the trip to the top of the mountain seven times. He'll begin his track for an eighth championship today an achievement unprecedented in motorsports. Another unprecedented event with the ASA's television coverage is the appearance of my partner in the booth this year, Jim Tretto. Now, even though you might not recognize Jim, if you've ever listened to the ASA's radio broadcast, you certainly have heard him over the last couple of years. Now, one thing is for sure, you will recognize the guy Jim is standing by with. Thank you very much, Ralph. I'm glad to be part of the broadcast this season. I may be a new face to ASA, but you can see this gentleman to my right is no stranger to the American Speed Association. Mike Eddy, you're one of two drivers in the entire world that can say you're trying to win an eighth national championship in stock car racing. What are your thoughts going into this season? Well, uh, thoughts are is we'll just uh, do everything just like we always have, and uh, it'll come along here one of these times. Now, Mike, looking at the season, it's starting earlier than ever. In 1995, you started out gangbusters, winning the first three AC Delco Challenge Series events. Are you prepared at this early in 1996 to defend that championship and perhaps look for a win this early? Oh yeah, we're we're always prepared. Uh, you know, uh, the whole Goodrich team works hard, and uh, we're here to to win the race and uh, go for that eighth championship. Very typical of the ASA AC Delco Challenge Series competitor, Mike Caddy, Bob Seneker, Gary St. Amant, Dennis Lattman's Tom Jones. Competitive spirit, drive, and determination. Of course, everybody who is racing here in Lakeland, Florida is hoping that at the end of the season, they will be named the 1996 ASA Series champion. There is a select group of drivers, however, that are looking for another title, and it's highly coveted in this series. It's called the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year Award, and here's a look at three of the drivers that want that crown. Hi, I'm Dennis Berry. I drive the number five Sterling Performance Racing Engine Structural Transport Ford Thunderbird. Dennis Berry comes to ASA from the Iceman Series, where he is a three-time champion. He'll be driving for Don Benini's championship-winning team. 
Kevin Swinski from uh, Menominee, Michigan, driver of the car number one, Brown and Sharp, Coleman Racing Products, Chevrolet, Monte Carlo. Kevin Sawinski comes to ASA from ARCO, where he also owns a championship. He'll be driving the LeFevre Racing Team entries. I'm Kenny Irwin. I drive the Pontiac Wins number 14 car. Kenny Irwin Jr. comes to ASA from USAC, where he has been a consistent winner. He'll be driving for Bud Gavin in 96. Unfortunately, one of those young upstarts has already hit a big snag here this weekend in Lakeland, Florida. Kenny Irwin Jr. had problems early on. Now, he's standing by with the other new member of our broadcasting crew, Dave Burns, who's going to be replacing me down on Pitt Road. Dave? Thanks, Ralph. Couldn't be more excited to be here after six years following the AC Delco Challenge Series. It's great to be a part of the team. And one of the great things that's going to happen in 1996 is the emergence of Kenny Irwin Jr., as you mentioned, as a Rookie of the Year candidate. And Kenny, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about when we saw you last at Toledo Speedway on the series in 1995. You were running with the leaders, uh, had a bit of a bobble. I'm wondering if you learned anything from that experience. Oh, yeah, we learned a lot. Uh, that was actually my first race that I had completed. Uh, it was 400 laps and come down to the end of the race, and, and I got a big stock car experience there uh, from Mike Eddy and a few of the other guys. That, you know, we're running second, and, and the crew said, you know, just you need to just stay right there. And, and uh, I guess I, I, I didn't want to settle for a second and just kind of got loose. And once you got out of the groove, those guys just won't let you back in. And, uh, but we had a lot of fun. I learned a lot, and uh, I'm sure it's going to help all this year. Kenny, yesterday here at Lakeland, you had some problems on the track. Uh, what is that going to do for your chances uh, this weekend in the 300-lapper? Uh, uh, well, I, we had to go to a backup car, so um, you know we got some practice out in it today. We didn't get it quite up to speed as what we were yesterday. Um, but if, as long as we can get it in the show, uh, we'll, we'll tune on it. And uh, it, it's actually the same car we run at Toledo, so um, it, it ought to turn out and be a good car. The biggest story during the offseason was the development of the new Pontiac Grand Prix body for stock car racing. And, of course, that's going to have a huge impact right here on the AC Delco Challenge Series. Sandy Hang will be one of our broadcasting partners this year. She'll be helping out on pit road on some of our bigger tracks, like right here at Lakeland. Sandy is standing by down on pit road with Jeff Neal and the brand new 1996 ASA version of the Pontiac Grand Prix. It's great to be back for another season of racing. One of the hottest topics of conversation is this new Pontiac and just what it's going to do when it gets on the track. Joining me now is Jeff Neal. He's done a lot of testing with the new Pontiac. Jeff, just how is this car going to handle on the race? Well, I tell you, the biggest thing I've seen so far is amount of uh, more traction you get with the car it seems a lot like a lot more downforce uh, the way the car is sculpted it's a pretty round car we're getting a lot of air to the rear spoiler and I tell you what the uh, Pontiac couldn't have designed a better body for racing uh, if, you know the Thunderbirds had an advantage and the Monte Carlo came out and now I think uh, we're dealing with the upper hand now I believe uh, I've got nothing but good things to say about it when you've got the car out in traffic, you've been working around the other cars. How is it handling? It's really smooth. I mean, I haven't noticed anything bad about it. Uh, like I said, we've been taking forward bite out of the car because we've got so much traction. And which, what I mean is, the car is, has the car sticks to the racetrack so good, you got to loosen it up more to get some more speed out of it, just because the body's working that well. Well, that's a quick introduction to everything that we've got for you here tonight. So let's get down to Dave Burns down on the start-finish line to get us underway. Well, what better way to get an ASA Hooters 300 race underway than to hear from the Hooters girls? Ladies? Welcome to ASA 300. Drivers, start your engines! Motors have come to life here in Lakeland, Florida. There's a good look at Brett Bell's car. We're going to be firing off the first green flag of the 1996 AC Delco Challenge Series right after this. Stay with us. The 1996 AC Delco Challenge Series live on TNN is brought to you in part by Win Oil Company, makers of quality automotive car care products. Remember, when it's wins, it works. And by your GM Goodrich service dealer. We want your business. 
Well, I hope everybody out there across the country has as beautiful of a night wherever you are as we do here in Lakeland, Florida. Fortunately, from what I've been seeing on the Weather Channel, that's probably not the case. But as you can see, the cars are rolling off the grid here. We're going to get right to our grid lineup for our season opening event here in Lakeland, Florida. On row number one, Scott Hansen, his first pole since 1992. He'll start up front. Pat Shaw, Rookie of the Year contender Dennis Berry will line up alongside of him. A pair of those new Pontiacs, Mike Eddy starting third today. Tony Raines in another Pontiac outside row two. Taking back to row number three now, Gary St. Amand in the Ford Thunderbird, and another one of the guys going after the rookie title, Kevin Sawinski for Mark Goffey. In row four, we find the youngster Joe Knott so close to his first win at the final event of 1995, outside the green number 33 of Brad Loney. Back in row number five, Ted Smokestad, one of the drivers who contended for last year's rookie title, really off to a good start. Bobby Gill, last year's Minnesota State Fair winner. Rolling off 11th will be Bill Bear tying his best ever start 11th in qualifying next to Tracy Schuler, who ran in 94 for Rookie of the Year. Row number seven finds on the inside Tony Roper and Rick Miller having one of his best seasons so far as far as qualifying goes in car number 31. In row number eight as the cars continue to break down the backstretch, Bob Seneca qualifying 15th. He was quick in practice. We'll see how he comes through the field. And the second round quick qualifier, Mike Garvey in the yellow number 23 Chevrolet. Behind them in row number nine, the 1994 Rookie of the Year, Dave Sensaba, and Florida native Eddie Sharp racing in front of his hometown fans. Starting off in the 10th row, we'll find Jack Lennon is replacing Todd Forbes in Noah Yoder 07, and Carl Muscott in the familiar blue and white number eight Chevrolet. Row number 11 finds Vacaville, California's Brett Bell lining up against the zero hero in a black machine, Tom Jones. Next, we'll find John Cadman, a road race winner in ASA competition, and Rick Beebe in the familiar number 15 for Leroy Troop Motorsports. A wild paint job, but look for him to run good. Veteran Mike Miller in the number 18, and the good doctor himself, Yale Conley, make up row 13. In row 14, Ray Skelman, the Oldsmobile driver out of Indiana, and Chet Blanton in a former car driven by Bobby Dodder. Behind them in row 15, good to have the gentle giant back with us, Dennis Lampman, and the female star of the ASA, Cindy Peterson in her Chevrolet. Starting 31st will be former NFL kicker Mike Culper in John Freeman's number six, and Jeff Neal we saw earlier in his number 39 Pontiac. And in row 17, Brandon Sperling and John O'Neill. Row 18, Kenny Irwin Jr. and Alec Pinson on car number 81. Ralph, it's gonna be Alec in the car that Harold Fair normally runs, number 81 with the CarQuest sponsorship. We've also got three different cars running in cars for us here tonight. We're going to start off with Dave Sensiba's view. We've got three angles with Dave. We've got a 360 camera. We've got a roof camera. And we've got a face camera. There's a good look at David. Now Gary St. Amon, who has three angles for you as well. We've got a roof camera with Gary and a rear roof, so you can see what's going on behind him as well as looking out. And of course, what would you do with in-car cameras except put one on board with a seven-time national champ? He's got a 360 camera, he's got a roof camera, and a face camera where you can watch Mike chop on that gum like he does. I've asked him at times at pit stops, does he get a fresh stick of gum in with the uh, bottle of water? He said, nope, I just drew on one piece the whole race. Here's a good look at that brand new Pontiac, and it is an absolutely beautiful car. In fact, the only division in the country right now outside of the Winston Cup and Bush cars that has a brand new body style for the Pontiacs ready to go racing is right here in ASA. Let's check in now with Dave Burns. What an exciting front row tonight with the front row starting. Dennis Berry on the outside, Scott Hansen on the inside. Hansen 121st start, Dennis Berry only his third ASA start. Hansen with 13 years, Dennis Berry only a rookie. The only thing similar between them, their race shops are one mile apart in Franklin, Wisconsin. You know, the other thing is they raced here last night and a lot of these guys, including Mike Getty and Scott Hansen were in the event last night. And there was a lot of beating and banging going on out here last night. Dennis Berry was a little concerned about the fact that he's already right up in the thick of things with these guys, and he's feeling this is going to be a pretty aggressive race as you take a look at those who did not make the show. Bob Dorswitz had a, had a uh, practice crash. Billy Turner in the, Oldsmo in the uh, Oklahoma driver, and Aaron Huff trying to make his first ever attempt at Oldsmobile. Brian Kavinsky, young start of Illinois, going after the rookie honors, as will Florida native Gary Grubbs and Greg Freed also did not qualify for the event tonight. 
Bob Jones, the Bob Jones slash Jim Weber effort, and of course Jeff Finley and Harold Fair. We've talked a little bit about the problems that Harold had crash in the car. It's the first time since 1982 Harold Fair has not made an ASA race 222 consecutive starts. 36 cars will take the green under Rogers Slack green flag here at USA International. 300 laps or 225 miles on this three quarter mile oval. The first ASA event here, it's the 10th different track that ASA will visit as their season opening venue. Beautiful weather here in Florida. Couldn't be a better time during February to be in Florida for a great racing evening. Three quarters of a mile again is the length. 14 degrees in the banking, 990 degree turns. The width 70 feet wide, plenty of room for passing. Four degree banking on the straightaways and straightaways, boy, they certainly are long, long drag strips here at Lakeland. They sure are, and we'll be set for the green flag the next time by. We hope you uh, are set to go with us. I know it's been a long winter for just about everybody across the country. Heck, we even had snow in Charlotte this year. I couldn't figure that out for the life of me. But we're going to warm things up for you as we get set to throw the first green flag of the 1996 AC Delco Challenge Series season. And two, and we're coming out of three and four at full song. Scott Hansen will be listed as the leader for the first ever ASA race on lap number one here in Lakeland, Florida. Dennis Berry and Mike Eddy battling for second. Dennis Berry extremely good on the high bank suit on the high bank short tracks. He's got Mike Eddy, one of the best, right behind him. Barry had a couple of days testing down here, so we'll see if that will pay off in traffic here with Mike Eddy directly behind. Good look as we go on board with the seven-time ASA national champion. Gary St. Amon, and there's that new Brad Loney paint scheme to number 33. What a great look off the roof of Gary St. Amon's car. You can see how close they're running at over 130 miles per hour down the straights here. Doesn't look like that new paint job's going to last very long on Loney's <laughs> car. They keep racing like that. We'll be seeing those black donuts on the side of the 33 in just a couple of laps. As anxious as we may be to start the season, these drivers are very anxious to get this race underway. And with it being a 7 p.m. Eastern start, these drivers all day were trying to get relaxed for the start of this race. Kevin Sawinski in the black number one, the Lefevre racing entry right behind Tony Raines in the 87. That's a battle for fourth. And keeping that adrenaline calm in the early stages of this race is going to be a big thing. Because the one thing you don't want to do is get overly aggressive early on and get yourself into a problem. We've got 300 laps of racing here to go tonight. So in the driver's meeting, Rex Robbins and Brian Robbins really stressing, take your time, be patient, let's get things rolling, get underway, find the rhythm, and then go racing. Number of drivers making their first ASA start here in Lakeland, Florida. They're trying to feel things out. There's a new combination we saw at the beginning of the program, so a lot of things are shaken down under green flag conditions here in Lakeland, Florida. We see again the battle between the Pontiac of Tony Raines. The one car again is Kevin Sawinski taking over. Yes, for Jay Sauter. Same number, same team, switching to Chevrolet. Here's that though, and we stack them up down in turns one and two. Dennis Lampman is involved in that. He's the nine car on the high side. And it looks like the double zero of Chet Blanton that's trying to turn around there, the red and black car. The Hubler Group sponsoring Chet Blanton again, trying to make a rookie run. Chet has nine ASA starts to his credit. This car was smoking at the outset, and it appears that he might have gotten out of shape. Blantman, you can see the damage on his Chevrolet Monte Carlo. That is uh, just cosmetic damage, but you see the left front wheel there, Ralph cocked over. It looks like it's a steering problem, perhaps a tie rod. Blantman will try to limp it back to the pit area. His father uh, had some heart problems this past week, so they, uh, our thoughts are with Pops Lapman, as everybody calls Steve. He's uh, back home. He uh, had some heart problems, and our thoughts are with their families. He is on the bend, but looks like they're going to have to continue the mending process in the Lapman camp as he comes in the pits. Well, we've got another look at it. You can see Blanton's already sideways. Skillman there in 27. We, again, could not see the contact, but as Blanton went around, look at all the cars avoiding Chet Blanton, and Dennis Lapman had a car on the outside, really nowhere to go. I was trying to get the number of the black car on the outside there, and I couldn't see it. Dennis Lampman has made his way all the way around and to the pit road. 
I'm sure Dennis Lamont didn't want to show the best appearing crew uniforms off just yet. That's Joe Knott with the hood going up on the Valvoline right before. Let's go to Dave Burns. Gentlemen, Joe Knott had engine problems this morning. They were testing the motor, didn't even fire it, just ran things through there, and they found they had a valve problem. They had to replace the entire motor this morning. They put a new one in there. This is the first time they've run it at speed, and obviously problems already for the Raby Ford team of Joe Knott. What a shame for young Joey Knott. He has really become a tremendous force over the last couple of years. Let's go down now to Sandy Hang, who has Dennis Lampman's story. Well, this is really tough luck for Dennis Lampman because a lot of his crew was telling me this felt like a magical season. The off season, they worked so hard. They went back to the computer. They made life-size mock-ups of the chassis to rebuild a brand new car. They were really hoping that something would go right with this car this season. And it looks like it's going to be tough luck for Dennis Lampman. Dennis's brother, Jimmy, sitting on the sidelines with the air gun in his hands. You see the gentle giant already climbing out of the car. Here's your leaders. We'll be back for more right after this. Welcome back to Lakeland, Florida. We are getting underway with the season opener for the 1996 ASA season. As you can see, we are under caution if you're just joining us. Chet Lent, Dennis Lampman having problems down in turns one and two, but we're about set to go back to green as the pace car makes its way down pit road. Green flag. Single file restarts at ASA, but Dennis Berry getting uh, pressured by Mike Getty, who's now working on Scott Hansen quickly as Tony Raines now jumps to the outside. Hey, heading into the third turn, Raines in the white Pontiac. Dennis Berry taking over from Brian Rafter in the Fanatic Motorsports 5. And we stack him up in turn number three. That's Dave Sensipa's number four. Oh, and we get more problems as more cars get involved. The Ted Smokestad, the 32, and it looks like Alec Pinsano in the 81, the CarQuest car having problems in turns turn three. Just about the middle of the entrance. There's Dave Sensible. They don't have any more cars left. Kenny Irwin had a problem Friday. This is uh, Dave Sensible's primary car, but you can see it's uh, quite a bit rearranged. Yeah, in fact, a lot of people were expecting to see Kenny Irwin with a black paint scheme. His wins car is now painted white because he is driving Sensible's backup car. Let's check in now with Sandy Hay. Well, I'm standing by right now with Dennis Lamp, and he's out of the car as his crew works on it. Dennis, yeah. what happened on this deal? Well, it looked like a 27 car drove into the, the zero car. He lost it and just didn't have no place to go. What's the track conditions out there like right now? I don't know. Uh, we didn't get there. They were great for us. Uh, them guys were racing kind of hard for the first couple of laps there to be racing. So uh, I don't know. Right now, we're watching your crew work on the car. Is it a possibility that you can get back out on the track yet? I didn't even get to look at it when I walked away. They're taking care of it, though. It's got to be a disappointment. We know that your father's on his way back to Milwaukee. We wish him the best. Is he watching the race right now? I don't know. I think he's in transport to home, so we'll see what happens. He'll be all right. Okay, that's Dennis Lampman. All right, thanks, Sandy. Uh, unfortunately, Dave Sensma having a big problem, and Dave will be one of our in-car cameras here today, so going to change the angle on that. However, we've got a couple of great angles of that replay. One of them is going to come courtesy of Dave Sensma, but take a look at this. Battle for third is shaping up, and you see that smoke that's down in the grass coming back across the racetrack in the Super America Pontiac. And there's sense of a center punch in the left, the right rear of Smokestead, and seeing escaping around the outside is Jack Landis. Then Pinsano on the apron lost traction. He goes around. A lot of cars on the brakes there. We see everyone else following through. Well, here's the bad news for Dave Sensiba from Dave. Watch and listen. We're going to let Dave and the boys try to straighten up the lane automotive number four. See if they get Dave back up to speed here so we get more great shots for you on the season opener in Lakeland, Florida. Stay with us. The last time the ASA series opened up at a brand new racetrack was the inaugural ASA race at Columbus, Ohio back in April 1988. That event was won by Dick Trickle. Let's check in with Dave Burns, who's standing around Ted Smokestad's pit. Well, Ted Smokestad, as you mentioned, was involved in the altercation just a few moments ago. And what they found when they checked 
every tire around Ted's car is that the toe end is actually incorrect on the car. What that means is that the tires are now pointing in at the wrong angle. If you picture yourself pigeon-toed, to uh, Ted's tires are a little bit too pigeon-toed or not. They're trying to work on the suspension and get that corrected. He's obviously gone a lap down. Green flag comes back out and Scott Hansen continues to lead. The scary news for Scott Hansen is the last time he won a ball, as we told you in the beginning, was 1992 at Tri-City, a very small racetrack in Michigan that ASA is not competing at anymore. The very next night, they had another race in Flint. He broke his leg. That was Berlin, you're right. Yeah, it was a back-to-back -back venue. That was on his birthday. He said, I hate this place since, and he doesn't want to bring up his birthday because of that memory. So hopefully things go a little bit better for Scott Hansen here We won't remember June 26th as your birthday, Scott. Don't worry about that. Great racing action here in the AC Delco Challenge Series. Again, Gary Sanamon trying to advance his position. He started in fifth spot trying to gain that back coming through off of turn number four. That's your battle for seventh place right there. Make that sixth as Sanamon goes up and around Kevin Sawinski. Sawinski's deal is a good situation. Car number one is a Chevrolet. It's brown and sharp. It's a metrology company. It works with the uh, metal materials company. So he just got into Brad Loney for some yeah. quality time there. But Sawinski's a great level-headed short track racer out of Wisconsin, now working with the team uh, based in Minnesota. He looks like he's having big problems though right now. He is slipping backwards in a hurry. Bill Baird, who had one of his best qualifying efforts ever, gets around to the outside. and. Sawinski, the Arco champ, having troubles as Rick Miller now comes up to challenge and right behind him, the Bluebird, Bob Seneker. So it looks like Sawinski is slipping backward. There goes the power flow Chevrolet coming in the Johnsonville Ford with Bob Seneker. Again, the Bluebird started 15th. You normally see him starting up front. He won the qualifying uh, award last year after getting so many points in qualifying uh, up front. But he's going to have to do it from mid back today. Well, whatever is wrong with Sawinski's car, it is certainly costing him and costing him dearly as now Mike Garvey's going to take a shot at him. Garvey, the yellow number 23, was asked to basically as a relief driver for Alan Queen. He qualified the car Friday, not quick enough for the show. They put Garvey in. He was second round quick yesterday at, a, at a pretty darn near top 10 qualifying speed. So we're watching Kevin Sawinski slip back in the pack as he deals with problems. Dave Sensiba has already had a big problem, and Sandy Hang is standing by with his crew chief. Bill McGowan is here with me right now. They've ripped the entire nose off the car. They were trying to bungee it. How bad is it, Bill? Well, <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's really hard to tell right now, but definitely not the way we wanted to start start the season. Um, we're going to wait till the next yellow. It looks like we got one. We're going to get back in and see what we can do. There must be a huge problem with oil on the racetrack or something down in turn three because it just caught everybody out of, out of whack and we stacked them up big in turn three. We were just talking about Rick Miller in the purple and white number 31 extremely quick around the carnival when we we're talking about Sawinski. He went flying into turn three, swapped in so quick, he hit the left sides, I believe, before he had a chance to turn the wheel. Brett Bell, Eddie Sharp, Rick Miller is over there, Bill Baird is in the wall. That's Eddie Sharp there, a brand new paint scheme. He's got Kenny Wallace's Motorsports Grill on the quarter panel for a one race deal. There is Rick Miller's extrude honed Chevrolet. Ooh, there we go. Tracy Schuler underneath Bill Baird. Well, when we get a chance to come back, We'll re-rack the replays for you and try to sort out the mess in turn three. Don't go away. The 1996 AC Delco Challenge Series season is up and underway. Unfortunately, it is not going well for Rick Miller. The driver of the number 31 is out early here tonight. Just joining us, we stacked him up down in turn three. Here's a look at the replay from Gary St. Amant. Watch this. Bobby Gill looks like lost some fuel there and his car as it skates it, it looked like there was a lot of fluid coming out the back end as Gill's car went up into turn number three showering the racetrack with fluid and that caused a zero traction for the rating. Look at Rick Miller fly into the turn. Here comes Tony Roper in the black number 10. Miller's already sideways. Nothing was wrong with the car. All that fluid on the racetrack caused an extremely hazardous situation. Miller goes in the fence, and now we see the pile up behind him, Ralph. We've got Eddie John Sharp. Cadman going around on the silver number 70. Eddie Sharp was sitting sideways there along the fence. Brett Bell's in there. A lot of cars, the 45 of John O'Neill also getting sideways. This is just behind Rick Miller, who found the fence first. Everyone else went way low to get around him. But the fuel was already down from the Bob Gill, Bobby Gill Pontiac, and the rest of the car is really without traction. 
found the wall and uh, hopefully everybody's okay. We saw Rick Miller limping there, but the uh, the carnage is pretty heavy duty for this early on in the race. There's Bill Barrett. He's out of the car. Tracy Schuler is out of the car as well. Let's check in with Dave Burns. Well, Bobby Gill is standing here, and Bobby, it sounds like some of the problems over in turn four were indeed caused by your Pontiac. Uh, did you have any warning that the motor was going to go? No, we didn't. Um, the JB Pontiac Gillen Enterprise was running good. Uh, we done moved up four spots, and the car was working super, and um, it just broke coming off the turn two on us. And Bobby, how is it as far as the racing out there? Is it a wide track in terms of uh, lots of room to maneuver and passage? Is it easy to race out there? Yeah, um, we tried a couple times on the outside, which I think I could go out there, and um, but we're we made a couple moves there on the bottom on a couple of restarts, and um, I think there'll be some racing out there before it's over with. Bobby Gill, a short day today. He won a race last year at the Minnesota State Fair. Right now, I'm down pit lane. This is Sandy Hank down pit lane, and I'm with Mike Chaffee, the crew chief for Kevin Swinski. What the heck is going on? Well, it uh, looks like we've probably got a piece of something that's worked its way into the carburetor. Uh, the car's just kind of lays down on the straightaway once in a while. Uh, it's really a shame because uh, we were real excited. The car is handling great. Uh, everybody's worked super hard. We built this team in basically uh, a month. Brown and Sharp came on board with us. Uh, Coleman Racing Products, Tzar Engineering, and we really, uh, we're really hoping that it clears up again so we get back and run with the boys. Okay, that's Mike Chaffee, crew chief. Well, Mike Miller has made his way down pit road as well. Looks like he's got a lot of front end damage. Tracy Schuler going out to take another look. At the Leftovers of the number 61. Stay with us. We're going to clean it up and come right back to Lake. USA International Speedway is the 48th different facility that the ASA has visited since it began in November of 1972. Florida is the 18th state in which the series has competed. We've even made it to three different provinces of Canada. Of course, Florida is the farthest south we've ever gone. Let's check in with Sandy Hay. Well, I'm standing by now with John Cadman, one of the drivers that got caught up in that whole mess. John, what happened from your viewpoint? Well, I was coming down the back straightaway and I saw the wreck unfold. My spotter told me the wreck was there, but somebody obviously blew up halfway down the back straightaway and I got into the oil and the antifreeze as I hit the brakes and just lost control of the car. There was nothing I could do. One of the big stories of this race, a lot of people have been speculating the tire wear, how long these tires are gonna last, how well you're going to be able to use them. How was it? Well, my car was pretty good. You know, I was just biding my time and taking it easy. It's a long race, and I was just hoping to be there at the end. Tire wear, I don't think it's going to be too much of the factor. Goodyear supplied a pretty good tire here, pretty soft compound, and uh, I don't think it's really going to be too much of an issue. Okay, that's young driver John Cadman. Out of luck today. Well, now, this is one of the wildest stories I think I have ever heard. That is Eddie Sharp, who is sponsored this weekend by Kenny Wallace's new motorsports grill over in Orlando. Now, Eddie has got a guy on his crew by the name of Glenn Bob, that young man right there. Now, these two guys have been friends forever. Now, how did they become friends? Eddie ran him over, literally, in a van. Glenn Bob was riding along on a moped, and Eddie, well, he ran him over. They both say it was each other's fault, of course. And about two weeks later, Eddie's dad had hired a crew to come out and do some yard work at the house. After running him over, Eddie gets up one morning, looks out his window, and he sees this guy he'd run over mowing his yard. He goes out and says, hey, aren't you the guy I ran over? Yeah, yeah. So they became friends, and the next thing you know, lifelong buddies, and Glenn Bob is working for Eddie Sharp here tonight in Lakeland, Florida. Glenn Bob is one big speed bump, though, and uh, um, Eddie Sharp is not the tallest guy. He's a stocky dude, but he's not as big as Glenn Bob, so I think he's easy. Uh, luckily, he got off the hook, I should say. He would have more than the moped wrapped around him, I think, yeah, if exactly uh, Glenn right. Bob uh, had a different temperament. We do want to say hello to uh, Eddie's grandfather, John Sharp, who's a little bit under the weather. We hope he's feeling well. He wanted to be out here tonight, watch his grandson race. We hope to see him back out at the racetrack real soon. Rick Martindale is also under the weather. Rick probably a little bit more under the weather now as he just sees the car of his, his driver, Brett Bell, get beat up and banged up out on the racetrack. And one final get well, Debbie Ritchie, who's also a big part of the ASA family. Speaking of ASA family, we uh, got a good buddy of ours stopping by the booth, and we'll get to him in just a second. But first, let's check in with uh, Sandy Hank. You know, we were talking about Brett Bell just a moment ago. I'm with his crew chief right now, Dennis Grossnickel. Some tough luck for this young team. Things looked very promising, and they still do. This is an obstacle. What happened for Brett out there? 
Well, what happened was this fast racetrack in the uh, Wonder Bar Redline Oil uh, Thunderbird was running pretty good, and uh, somebody dropped an engine, and there was just no place to go. And Brett just did what he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, we'll be back in Columbus. We're going to try to get him back out and make a couple laps and gain a couple more positions. We'll just have to look at the damage and uh, see how it goes. Well, Dennis, earlier I asked John Cadman this question about tire wear. There's a lot of questions, a lot of crew chiefs wondering this is a new track, a new venue for all of you, how long the tires would go. What were you planning on as far as pit stops? How many laps on a set of tires? Well, I was going to try. The tire, tire wear has been pretty good ever since we've been here. Uh, we're going to try to come in like, say, lap 60 or 70 or something like that, you know, and then after that, you know, it was probably three sets of rights and one set of left sides, you know, and try to go the distance with that. But we've had pretty good luck with tires so far here. Okay, that's Brett Bell's crew chief, Dennis Grossnickel. They had a plan ready to go with it, just didn't work out. Well, Brett Bell was hoping that his bad luck was certainly going to change here with a new uh, season. As you might remember from last year, poor Brett tore up race cars left and right. Well, it's good to see him back here at an ASA race. He's gone off to uh, greener or yellower pastures, I guess is the case for you this year, Rob Albright. Good to have you back, buddy. How's life with Johnny Benson over it's, there in the Winston Cup world? It's, it's great to be back, although it's really weird to put this headset on and look down at the box and see guests. I'm not accustomed to this, and I'm a little bit nervous in this role. I just want to make sure you got the right credential on. Well, I don't know. They, they fixed me up with about three or four different kinds of credentials. The one I didn't get was the purple nose ring, but I guess you didn't need that this weekend. But it is, it is great to be back. Near the end of last season, uh, Johnny approached me and said that uh, he needed a business manager uh, to help him with his career and help negotiate some sponsorship deals and that kind of thing. And um, he asked me to handle that for him. So he's a rookie, I'm a rookie, but things are going really well so far. And after struggling getting acclimated to the brand new Grand Prix body style up until the last practice session, he was wondering if he was even going to be in the big show, but qualified 17th, so we're pretty excited about that for the twin 125s. It's great to see from the former ASA champion, uh, Johnny Benson, moving on to the Winston Cup world and doing well, carrying the banner of the ASA over there. We're just hoping maybe he was going to come on out here tonight. It's kind of like ASA Old Home Week. We've got uh, lots of people roaming around here tonight, just there we are. Just over here on the other side of us, Butch Miller, the 1994 ASA champion, and Harold Fair hanging out over here as well. Lots of people making their way back here to Lakeland. Let's Look check at in with a party. Yeah, <laughs> let's check in with Sandy again. Well, I'm now with uh, Rick Miller. Rick, you okay? It looks like you might have gotten a little shaken up in that deal. No, oh, not really. My foot busted off the clutch pedal a little bit. It's just a little bit sore, but I'm okay. It was a shame. The Stuart Hone Chevy was really running good. We were sitting in the top ten, just cruising around, waiting putting in laps and somebody blew a motor or something and put oil everywhere and it just, it was a mess up there. Just didn't have nowhere to go and got into it. I don't know if the folks at home can see, but right behind him, they're working on his car, trying to get it back into the race. It's just been a tough deal for him. Is this car going to be able to get back in the race or is it just a done deal for you? Uh, I haven't really looked at the car, but I looked out on the wall there a little bit. It's, I, the crew's a good crew, they're really good, but miracles, I don't know if they have any miracles in them. So I think we're done for tonight. Well, the last car is just about cleared away from the turn three area. Most of them that were involved in the incident are down on pit road. So we're going to step away for one more chance. Scott Hampson, still your leader. We're still cleaning up from the third caution flag of the evening here at USA International Speedway. Season opener on TNN, the AC Delco Challenge Series. Tracy Schuler is caught up with our Sandy Hang. Tracy, you were one of those cars that just got collected in that whole deal. What did you see from your vantage point from the cockpit of the 61 car? Well, we were running along there in a train, and uh, I believe it was a two car. Somebody just let go in front of me, and the whole windshield was just covered up. And You know, it's a national bathing products car. It was really hauling them hail today. We were going to just kind of hang in there for a while and, and adjust on it a little bit, and we didn't need to adjust much, but we had something to race with them. And, uh, I can say all, all heck broke loose there. This, uh, the windshield was covered and uh, guys were spinning and uh, also we were, were long for the ride. When you're looking at the car right now, what are you thinking? Your crew's trying to assess the damage. What are you thinking? Well, I, I just feel bad for the guys back at the shop. Uh, we just put this deal together to, uh, to run about three weeks ago and they worked so darn hard and uh, we unloaded off the trailer and uh, 12 time with very little laps on it. and. Uh, you know, I just feel bad for them, but, uh, you know, I think they'll get it back together some, and we'll be back for the next one. Okay, that's Tracy Schuler's car. He's got a mangled mess on his hands, guys. 
cars, Ken Salak on that car. They don't know how many races they're going to make with National Bathing Products on the car. Tracy Schuler, as we mentioned, ran for Rookie of the Year in 1994. He was third in points behind Sensiba and Refner, and what a great battle of rookies that was. He, uh, best finish that season was an eighth at Columbus Motor Speedway. In fact, the car he was driving used to belong to that guy, Scott Hansen and Sandy Hang, or uh, Dave Burns, I should say, is standing by with his new crew chief. His new crew chief this year is, in fact, Lynn Miller. And uh, Lynn, Scott has led every lap so far. Has he been saying anything to you on the radio? Not too much. He pretty much likes the car. Had it pretty well dialed in yesterday. We, in fact, we didn't even practice it yesterday. But the AFCO Monte Carlo is running pretty good. He's actually talking more about the pace car speed right now because he doesn't think he can keep up with it. But he's pretty happy so far. Well, Hanson will continue to lead things here. Joe Knott earlier had motor problems, as you remember, and Knott uh, replaced a plug wire. Chris Bradley went underneath the hood and replaced a spark plug wire on that new motor they put in. Not an oversight. It was just in inappropriately attached. They're ready to go for the rest of the race. Chris Bradley, of course, the crew chief for Joe, has been his crew chief for a couple of seasons now. And the one thing this is doing to the, to the teams out there, gentlemen, is the fact that it's not giving them an opportunity to get a good look at the new... Goodyear tires over a lengthy period of time under green flag conditions as we go back at it on lap 46. Looks like the brand new bias fly compound that Goodyear has developed for these Goodyear Racing Eagles has had some great tire wear. A lot of practice was uh, time was allotted for the ASA cars yesterday. AC Duncan Challenge Series competitors had no problems with the tires whatsoever. But as you mentioned, Ralph, we've had a number of cautions within the first 45 laps here. Hansen's out front, but as you said, don't have enough green flag laps. 80 to 100 laps is what you want to get out of tire wear. We haven't had a lot of green yet to figure that out. Boy, threading the needle there with Cindy Peterson on the bottom in the 36. Oh, and just in front of Cindy, Jet big Blanton. bumps for Jet Blanton in one car. Hard Yale into Conley. the wall. That's the Dr. Yale Conley. He's moving around, ready to climb out of the car already as the motor erupts into flames. That must be an oil leak. Wow, what an incredible impact. I'm amazed that he's able to climb out unscathed. Jim and Ralph, you know, he's obviously dejected and that car is destroyed, but when it hit, I thought that young man is hurt. Two there we see above. Kevin Sawinski as well, the ARCO champ who's racing for the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year Award with the ASA this year. His night is done. Chet Blanton's night is done. Hale Conley, who, by the way, just bought himself a brand new Speedway up in West Virginia. He was going to become a race promoter. Bought it along with uh, the gentleman who owns a racetrack in Myrtle Beach and his father-in-law up there in West Virginia. It's a beautiful facility. I had a chance to drive by there just a few weeks ago. Gary St. Amant got married up in Columbus, Ohio, and I went up for the wedding and drove by and almost ran off I-77 looking at that racetrack. Beautiful little 5 8 mile uh, high bank dirt track. Doc Conley says they're going to pave it here shortly. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned Gary St. Amant, newlywed with Tracy Hayes, the president of the Winston Cup, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the ASA Racing Wives Auxiliary. She has uh, got a big task ahead of her. They got married January 27th. We also want to pass along our congratulations to Tony and Michelle, you formerly Wilson Roper, who were married this past December. So Tony Roper and Gary St. Amant coming in with wedding rings on, ready for the season. Wow, look at the damage to the Docks car. Glenn Allen Sr. is helping out with this car as well, and we expect to see Glenn Allen Jr. back with us at a few races when he's not running his new Bush car, but let's check in with Dave Burns, who's with the mayor. Well, Glenn Allen Sr. is uh, around the area because of his son, Glenn Allen Jr., running at Daytona. Uh, excited to be here tonight, uh, but Yale is out early. You've helped out with this Yale Conley team for a long time, Glenn. Uh, did he say anything to you? Is he okay? Yeah, he's okay. He radioed he's okay. Um, somebody hit him from the back, and uh, the Samson the Chevrolet was running real well. We thought we'd have a good race here. We got in two wrecks, and both times it wasn't his fault. He got tagged from the back, but uh, we'll be back uh, at Columbus, and we'll be ready to get him. Now, Glenn, I need to ask you, how excited are you as a dad to see your boy moving up in the ranks and uh, running the Bush Series this year? Oh, well, I'm very excited. Uh, I'll be nervous Tuesday when he qualifies. All right, that's Glenn Allen Sr. His boy is running down south. Yeah, well, he's going to do just fine. Here's Chet Blanton crawling out, who's also running for Rookie of the Year honors here. Let's take a look at this replay. Conley is going into turn number three. Blanton's already on the apron. You see him spinning up the racetrack in the Hubler Group Chevrolet, the double zero going across the racetrack. Conley did everything he could to get out of the way, but he hit the wall with it. 
great impact there. We also see John, Cat, uh, excuse me, the 45 of John O'Neill going around, and we see already that the number one coming off the turn three wall just at the end there was already in the fence. Here's on board with Dave Sensman. I don't think Dave wants an in car anymore. <laughs> He's been too, too close to too much action already in this race. And it did look very definitely as if something mechanical had gone wrong with that dump of car number double zero because he was just sideways before he ever got to turn three. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, we were talking in the beginning of this race that adrenaline might be a big problem. We've had four cautions, but none of them have been from over exuberant driving. Stay with us. We've got our fourth yellow of the night. We got a lot of great racing going on between Scott Hansen, Mike Getty up front. Don't go away. We're back on board with Mike Getty, who's still chopping on the gum and just rolling around the racetrack as he tries to chase for an eighth ASA title. Well, the doc has made his way down to pit road and Sandy Hang right there. Well, doc, that was a hard hit. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, sore ribs. Uh, double zero just got sideways and then he came right back up the track and nowhere to go. You know, you're traveling fast here. Uh, day's over. I just want to thank my sponsor, Symington and Valvoline. I appreciate everything they've done. I'm sorry we had a short night. Now, we were coming up on lap 50 when that happened and we've been talking tonight all night about tires. How were your tires handling up until that point? My tires were fine. I just think a lot of people were driving over their head. I've done it in the past too. But it's early in the race. There's no reason to get crazy. And I think we got some guys out here that don't run with us regularly. They're getting crazy. I've been there, but you just got to settle down. And um, that's what's going on out there. But tire wear is fine. No problem. Okay, some tough luck for the doc. You know, I think a lot of the problem has to do with the configuration of this racetrack. Extremely long straightaways and short, tight t corners. And some cars are geared to pull well off the turn. And there is a lot of frustration. If you can't get a guy on the straightaway, at least at the early stages of the race, guys, it's hard to make that outside groove work. You've got to make that move on the straightaway. And I think that's causing a lot of the uh, intensity on the racetrack in the early going. You're exactly right, Rob. And speeds have been up over 107 miles an hour down the straightaways. Let's check in now with Dave Burns and Kevin Sawinski. Well, you're looking at the front end of Kevin Sawinski's battered racing machine right now. And Kevin is okay. He's out of the car. They're going to try to get back in this thing, it looks like. They're working pretty feverishly. Kevin, uh, you don't appear to have any damage. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, definitely. We're, uh, we're fine. You know, these cars are built pretty strong. One of them deals where uh, we had to come in uh, for an unscheduled pit stop because of, uh, because of some uh, carburation problems. And, you know, we, we kind of feared going out there running towards the back of the pack so early in the race. But uh, some of these things happen like that. Are you guys getting prepared for next week, or do you plan to get back out there tonight? Well, we're going to try to get back out there if we if we all can, but uh, it looks pretty rough right now. Kevin Sawinski, they're working hard on it, trying to get him back out. Okay, David, thank you. You know, we've seen in the past, as you take a look at the names who are already behind the wall, and one of those is going to be Kevin Sawinski. You cannot afford to lose any points in the battle for the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year award. We've seen that time and time again with this series. You can ask uh, Brian Refner about it. You can ask uh, Rick Miller about it, Eddie Sharp about it. It's going to cost Kevin Sawinski to come out of Lakeland not scoring a lot of points towards the Rookie of the Year award in honor of Pat Shower. Well, we're just about cleaned up with the yellow number four. Set to go back underway with Green Flag Racing when we come back. Welcome back to Lakeland, Florida. You know, this is the earliest the ASA series has ever opened up a racing season. Well, actually, we did open one up in February on the 27th indoors the Pontiac Silverdome. Some guy named Tom Jones won that one. You were there, weren't you, Rob? I was there. I, I almost hate to admit that. I was just talking to Butch Miller. I said, very few people remember that. I mean, Harold Fair's standing here, too. We do. Mike Eddy does. Bob Seneca does. And I think we're the only ones who really date ourselves. But that was wild. Yeah, and actually, it was Butch who beat Tom Jones. I That's said it was right. Tom that went yeah. loose. It was Butch. <laughs> February 27th, 1983, in the Pontiac Silverdome. That's the only ASA race that was ever conducted indoors. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, one week ago in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I was uh, walk visiting a newborn and, uh, and, their, and the parents, and it was 25 below zero on Saturday at high noon. So I'm glad oh to my. be here in Florida. That new Grand Prix. That Speaking of indoors, gorgeous. this is great indoors. I love it that is. new body. It is a pretty car. Guess what car manufacturer Benson's running? Uh, okay, hey, yeah. let's check in with Sandy Hay. <laughs> Well, right now I'm standing by with Howie Ledow. He's the crew chief for Tony Raines. This yellow has given the crew chiefs and drivers a lot of time to talk about what's going on with the car. What's Tony saying about the car right now? 
Well, we're just trying to decide what we're going to change. Uh, we're going to change something, but we really haven't had enough green flag laps yet to get a good read on, on the car. So uh, I told him as long as he's got a little time here in his hands, he might as well start thinking about what he wants to do, you know. Tentatively, how is the car handling for him? It's pretty decent. It's not bad. It's not perfect. But uh, we're just waiting to see as the tires get a little bit more wear on them, uh, what changes or, or if it stays neutral, whatever. Okay, that's how we let out crew chief for Tony Raines. The ASA Pontiac body is five inches longer on the back deck lid. And a lot of the drivers are saying it is great because it's catching a lot of air. It has rounded lines on the back end of the car, and that helps direct all that air back onto that big rear spoiler and keep that car nicely tucked down on the racetrack. But it also really changes things in the front end of the car because the car is now a lot tighter. So they've softened up the front end of the car, and not getting a lot of green flag laps is uh, making it a little bit trickier for these guys to try to figure out which direction they want to go with the car. I know we're about to go back to green. I need to head out of here, guys. Johnny said, hey, he wanted to be here, but he was committed uh, to go to a Pennzoil event up in Volusia County with his teammate, Jack Hogchild, who runs the uh, World of Outlaw Sprint car. So I'm going to head out. I, it was great to be back. Hopefully, I'll see you a few more times this year. Rob, it's great having you back Thanks. here as always, my Thanks. friend. And, Jim, uh, thank you, Rob. Best thank of luck to you. you. And uh, Johnny Benson, of course, all of us here in the ASA family will be pulling for well, number 30 in the new Pennzoil Pontiac in the Winston Cup Tour. Look at the rundown. Scott Hansen started from the pole position, four tenths quicker than Dennis Berry, who's well back in the field after a pit stop. Hansen will lead the field back to green. You see Mike Garvey about eight cars back in the bright yellow number 23. A lot of people were a little bit surprised to see him actually out here racing with us this weekend. He actually won the first ever race run at Lakeland, Florida after they redid the entire racetrack last season. He Whoa, won big problems feature. in the front end for Hanson's car. That cost him lots of ground now to Mike Eddy. And Eddy is right there within striking distance on the inside. Hanson trying to squeeze him down to the bottom. And I must point out to you that these two got together last night. There was some bad blood flow between the two of them earlier today. And now Mike Eddy and Gary Sinemont both slip past Hanson. Maybe a tire problem for Hanson. Maybe he's overextended his. The car washed out again. Hanson is extremely fast. There are probably more laps other than Mike Garvey here at Lakeland, Florida than any of the competitors on the racetrack. Mike Eddy, however, biding his time, started third, worked around Dennis Berry, now worked around Scott Hansen after Hansen bobbled. We see a great shot off the wind's board of Gary St. Amant. The top two cars now for turn number two, right down the backstretch, the long backstretch here at Lakeland. Back on board, the wind's Ford Thunderbird of Gary St. Amant as we run along here at Lakeland, Florida. Hansen sits in third, Tony Raines is in fourth, Brad Loney back in fifth. Now, I should straighten out for you a little bit about what happened last night. Eddie and Hanson were running along side by side. They got together. Hanson said it was Eddie that came down on him. Mike said it was no problem. Looked like Scott just tripped it up on me. Nobody said a whole lot of anything. But you know how racers are. Everybody's not going to say a whole lot until they get onto the racetrack and deal with it then. So it's interesting to see how these two race each other now. That was at a Hooters Cup support event last night, won by Freddie Campbell out of Michigan. And those guys are running different cars a little bit quicker on this racetrack. But you can see now, Hansen has regained his form, now looking to the inside of the Ford of St. Amand. I wonder if maybe just under those yellow flag laps, he picked something up on the tires and it didn't rub off when he tried to heat him up. His boy, he is on the inside of St. Amand there. And the car is definitely under control. I mean, he put it right up under there, but did not slide up too hard into Gary. St. Amand cannot get down on the racetrack because Tony Raines is right down underneath them here. The clean burn Pontiac is now he got inside. I believe Hanson knows that's the only way he could have got around St. Amand because the oil dry laid down early on and after that caution. It was very slippery. That's what cost Hanson the lead after trying to pinch uh, Mike Eddy off down the backstretch. Gary's got to try to do something with Raines here in a hurry because right behind him, Brad Loney chomping at the bit to slide past as well. So Gary needs to get a little couple more inches out and he can tuck back down in front. Now Hanson starting to look onto the inside of Mike Eddy. Eddy give him half a group. That's enough. That's, a, that's all Mike Eddy's going to give you. That's it. You're not going to be given anything from the driver of the black 88. You're going to have to earn your way past him. But Scott Hanson 
is as tough as they come when it comes to ASA racing. He is not afraid to go after the polar bear, and he does it cleanly. Nice move by Scott Hansen as we go back on board with Mike Eddy. G. Midrush Pontiac continuing to run extremely strong, but Hansen just a bit quicker at this point in the race. Very good observation, Ralph Sheehan. I think Hansen just had a bobble there and brought it back in. Now Gary St. Amon has worked fast. Tony Raines gathered back into third spot as we see Mike Eddy losing ground through the in-car camera work here at Eddie's Pontiac to leader Scott Hansen. One thing that's changed for Scott Hansen this year is he's got TZAR motors. What we've seen out of the TZAR power plant in the last couple of years is huge horsepower. Places like Brainerd, Milwaukee, Topeka, where we ran with real long straightaways, just like we have here. The TZAR power plant has been incredibly strong. Did wonders for Jay Sauter last two years. Late race as well on the road course. Exactly. And now it is in the belly of Hansen's car as Mike Eddy slips back a couple of spots. We'll try to start off the action here as again going around the lap car of Ted Smokestead. St. Amant takes over third. Takes over second, rather. In third now is Tony Raines. The black car of Kenny Irwin dropping to the bottom. On board with Mike Eddy. Look how much distance Mike is lifting up real early. He's got a problem with that 88. And he's, he's going to the down. pits. The seven-time national champ is going to the pits, and we've got a yellow. Now, did Mike go in, or did he stay out? It looks like Mike Eddy stayed out on the racetrack. So that is going to give him an opportunity to go in without losing a lap. And poor Dave sends him a night. It goes from bad to worse. Sensible lost the front clip early on in the lap 13 incident with Ted Smokestad and Alec Pinsano. Now he's involved with the second incident as well as Jeff Neal in the promotion Pontiac. Mike Eddy, what a break for the seven-time champ. Let's check in with Dave. You know more about this, Dave? Well, Scott Hansen, gentlemen, Scott Hansen uh, let Mike Eddy go by just to see what he had. He wanted to see if he had any horsepower in that good wrench Pontiac, and it appears that uh, that may have been part of the reason that he's coming in now. But Scott Hansen apparently, according to their crew, let him go by just to see what he had left. I don't know about that, Dave. I know that's what they're telling you, but I think when you look at the video, you're going to think otherwise. I don't know. What do you think, Jim? I mean, it sure looked like he slipped up. Well, let's see if there's a problem with Mike Eddy now. Let's go down to Dave Burns. I mean, Eddie's pit, they're going to the right side of the car, and apparently they're just uh, looking at the rubber, not going underneath the hood, as you can see. And Eddie's now going to be down and out of here. We'll run right over and see if we can get a word with Howard Thomas. It doesn't look like there was anything else wrong. Howard, was there a problem? Yeah, Howard, was there a problem with his car at all or just a tire? And he's talking to Mike right now, apparently. Mike doesn't do a lot of talking on the radio, but uh, if you come in like this, it's pretty serious. Well, he had a flat tire. We'll have to check it out. Okay, you can't tell which one it is right now? Pardon me? You can't tell which tire is flat right now? No, they, they both still look round. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty close here. They're going to take a look at him real tight. In fact, they're putting the tape measure around him right now to see exactly what the circumference is on those Goodyear Eagles. Lots of high-tech observations going on here in the American Speed Association. Poor Dave Sentiba, frustrated and out of it in Lakeland. That's an onboard shot Dave Sentiba was hoping you would not see here tonight. His car gets towed behind the wall here in Lakeland, Florida. Here's why. In Dave Sentiba's car now going down on the back straightaway. Uh, excuse me, the front stretch into turn one here. Oops, looks like he might have got some help there. As he went around, he bobbled. There's Jeff Neal in the 39 car going around as well. So it appears some contact from the rear on Sensibo. Sandy is standing by with David. Well, David, looks like you had a little contact from behind that spun you out. Uh, you okay? Yeah, we're all right. Uh, you know, West Michigan Chevy dealers laying on one of car. We, we got caught off with a little wreck earlier, but car was okay yet. And holding our own and um, nobody's showing any patience out here today. Some tough luck here for Dave Sensaba. Well, we talked uh, earlier about the adrenaline flow and the over anxiousness of being the first race of the season. And it looks like maybe it's been a few people here tonight. There's been a good dozen cars behind the wall around pit lane with body damage and other structural damage. We saw Dennis Lapman earlier out of the event. A number of cars are behind the wall continually to be worked on, including Kevin Sawinski and his rookie run efforts. So again, it's a very fast racetrack. Three quarters of a mile. Average speed for the pole was 108 miles per hour. So you get an idea 
brand new pavement laid down just a year ago. Scott Hansen has led every lap until Mike Eddy took over at lap 63. Eddie had a lead for a while. He had a problem. Hansen re-inherited. Gary Sayamon has charged through the field from his fifth starting position. Tony Raines has started and stayed up front. And uh, we also have to give credit to Brad Loney, who started eighth and now sits fourth in the Sprite Econa Foods Pontiac. Well, there were concerns about the tires of Mike Eddy as you go on board looking at the champ. Let's check in with Dave. Dave, have they figured out anything on those tires? Well, they're rolling it away now, Ralph. That's the right rear tire that came off of Mike Eddy's car. That was the problem. They checked and checked for a hole in the tire, no hole. It was the bleeder valve that was faulty on Mike Eddy's right rear. That's the problem. That tire also showed extremely good wear. No problem so far for the Goodyear Eagles here at Lakeland. Okay, thank you, Dave. That is also going to change up his order on pit stop laps, Jim. And Scott Hansen has not been down pit road yet and what I've been hearing from the teams these new tires are phenomenal for two to three laps then they go off a little bit not away but just off from the speeds that you can get for those first two to three laps they're still a lot better than brand new tires or, or older tires I should say but then they even back out and you get a good consistent tire for the rest of the race so it's going to be interesting to see if Mike can move right back through the pack and catch up under the back bumper of Scott Hansen and then what plays out from there. Kevin Sawinski had the pit. He came through, and there was an accident. He got caught up in it. If they are faster cars, Mike Eddy, being the only man I've seen, weave through the field with convincing fashion at Berlin Raceway to take the lead later on in the event after being a lap down. He would be one of the few guys I would see going through there. And I'll have to see if Mike Eddy will flare up a bit and become the aggressive Mike Eddy we've seen in years past. One of the new Pontiacs being altered. That's Mike Miller's car. As you take a look at the 1996 ASA prize money, these numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger. Three million dollars on the line for the entire AC Delco Challenge Series for 1996. Point funds, nearly $600,000. That's over $100,000 an increase from 1995 to 96. First place check, I think I'll take that home if I was a driver out here competing at ASA. $160,000, 50 for second, 30 for third. This is again for season. Point finishes fourth, tw cool 25. Pat Sharma Memorial Rookie of the Year again, $50,000 to the top rookie at the end of the season. Ford is going to put up $18,000 per event, $8,000 to an event winner if they're running with the Blue Oval. Pontiac, $14,000 per event. And if a driver who happens to start from the pole is be, is be and win the race in a Pontiac, it gets an additional $4,000. So a lot of contingencies, Ford, Chevy, and Pontiac all involved here in the American Speed Association. Well, Scott Hansen is still our leader here in Lakeland, Florida. USA International Speedway. Stay with us. The ASA season underway. Welcome back, everybody. We just went back to Green Flag Racing, so you haven't missed anything here at the season opener for the ASA Series. We're working lap 88. The man up front is a man who has been there basically all night, Scott Hansen in the number 53. Gary St. Amon and the wins for Thunderbird as you go on board with him, running right along in second place. Tony Raines and Brad Loney battling it out for third. Bob Seneca has moved his way up from 15th to 5th position. The Bluebird in a homemade chassis coming after him from the back of the pack. And joining us in the booth as we bring you all the live action here on TNN, the editor emeritus of National Speed Sport News, the Bible when it comes to uh, racing magazines, Chris Economaki joins us in the booth. Chris, last time you were at an ASA race was Minnesota State Fair, I guess, huh? That's right, a long time ago. I can't get over what a beautiful racetrack this is and what a fine race you've got going here. And I'm surprised at how well-behaved uh, number 88 is. <laughs> yeah, Only yeah. one mark on the side of his car, coming up on 100 laps. Ah, uh, it's early yet. It's early yet. Yeah. Well, this is great. Nice racetrack. The 14-degree banks are just right for side-by-side -side racing. I was watching Hanson go back and forth. The AFC cars really look nice with those decals in place of the headlights and so forth. Uh, they are the best looking late model stock cars seen in an American race deck, I can tell you that from experience. I think that's probably one of the things that I love the most about the ASA car is how much it looks like what the fans and the grandstands have driven here to the racetrack yeah. tonight. That's right. Yeah, I got a Dodge in my garage is what Thumper is saying, you know, <laughs> one of those kind of things. Oh, uh, there's Seneca number 84. He loves that number. Uh, this, unfortunately, is the final race for Johnsonville Foods out of Wisconsin. They're getting away and uh, refocusing their efforts. So we wish them the best, but we've had a great relationship in the AC Double Challenge Series well, with Bob Seneca also. He'll, he'll take a couple of notches in his belt this year without that free food. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Bob Seneca in the 
84, nicknamed the sneaker, the bluebird, just about everything. And he builds this chassis at home. If you don't know anything about the ASA series, all the center sections come from Hal Engineering. The front and rear clips, you can do anything you want with. Yeah. A lot of people buy Hal's, a lot of people buy Port Cities. Bob Sinecker draws his out on his own on a piece of paper, designs what he wants, and then bends all the tubing himself. Now, you sure that? You sure he doesn't have a computer hidden in the back? No, there is one other guy that does have a computer. The only other guy in the field that does build his own chassis is Mike Miller. He does do his off of yeah. a computer. And what's really interesting, Chris, is that the two of them have done it in radically different ways, but then they compare notes after they've yeah. built their chassis, and they pretty much come out the same. Well, that's good. It's how closely matched the cars are. Here we got another pass coming up. It's a battle for third. Brad Loney trying to take that position away, and the Sprite Econa Foods number 33 finally gets around fellow Pontiac driver Tony yeah. Raines. Raines was working hard to keep him behind him. Now Seneca has the door open and continues to follow through. That again in the top five. Seneca now in the fourth. So the Bluebird marching through the field here tonight. There's one other thing you haven't seen since you uh, haven't been to an ASA race in the last year or so. We've got a brand new scoring system. I, I, I noticed that the Marquita was showing to me the Formula One thing, cars with transponders on them. It's amazing. Uh, you don't have to have a memory. It's all there on the screen for you. Developed by AMB Products in Holland. Dennis Marcus has come here from Holland. Uh, Formula One uses it. IMSA, SCCA. DTM. Uh, lots of different series. Series. Uh, touring series. ASA, the first major national touring stock car division to uh, utilize the system. No, no. Will this be used at all tracks? Yes, it will. This is going to go with us. We got our own scoring monitors. You can you got to take a, all the numbers. You got to put a, uh, a wire under the track at the start finish line. There's yep. a wire loop, a continuous loop that goes across the racetrack and it loops all across pit lane, comes back across pit lane, six and a half feet apart. The first metallic stripe starts the clock. The second one stops it within a mill millionth of a second to uh, get the record straight. Oh, I tell you, it's amazing. I used to score races with a stick in the dirt. <laughs> now, I know you've announced races all over the country as you watch the battle here. This is a good battle that's brewing up with Mike Garvey now coming through the field, and he's chasing down Tony Reigns. Garvey's running in sixth. Again, that veteran short track racer based in the southeast working here for one weekend deal. It may be more races for Mike Garvey, this yellow 23. He's working on the 87 of Tony Raines. Again, that's the battle for fifth position. So Raines started up front. And, uh, it seems like he's losing a bit. Dave Burns, Tony Roper had problems. Yeah, Tony Roper was in the pits here momentarily. Walk back here with me, and I'll show you why. He had a vibration at this point, which developed after they changed this wheel. The wheel was obviously broken here. Tony came in for a quick pit stop. They changed right side rubber, but he still got a vibration, and he has been back in and out of pit lane. So Roper goes back out of the racetrack. The battle for fifth continues to rage on. Mike Garvey, who won the first ever race here in Lakeland when they christened this new asphalt three-quarter mile facility last year, having a good run here in his first ASA event. He started 16th again, the fastest second round qualifier yesterday afternoon. Again, he's working the St. Louis Gear Chevrolet around. Now the outside he goes around Tony Ranger, at least pulls even. He now beats him into turn three. You know how many three-quarter mile tracks are in the United States? I don't, but I know you do. One. One. We're at it. We're at it. Right. Yeah. Well, Richmond. now what about Richmond? Richmond's three quarter. Oh, you're right. Okay, right. too. Wrong again. Right. <laughs> Listen, nice chatting with you guys. I got to take care of my national speed sport news. We're sampling here tonight. Thanks for the chance to be on. Right. Come back again Thank soon, you. Chris. Well, it's right. Thank you very much. Good luck. ASA show. Chris Economaki joining us here in the booth. As I told you, when you race down here in Florida and you open up your season, lots of people drop by. We've got more to introduce you to here in a little while. There's your leader up front, Scott Hansen, with a healthy lead over Gary St. Amant. So we're racing live on TNN with the ASA. We're back to Lakeland, Florida. The ASA season is open and racing. Scott Hansen making it look like it could be his year here early on. He has led all but just a handful of laps. He has yet to make a pit stop, though. 108 laps into this event, 300 laps the duration, 225 miles on this three-quarter mile track. You can see the Ted Smokestead having his problems. Makes way for second place runner Gary St. Amant. We go now to the roof of the Winds Ford. You can see the banking and the brand new pavement. Great adhesion here with the brand new Goodyear Racing Eagles. There. There's your gap back. There you to go. Second place. St. Amant running in second there. Hanson is the white car in the distance, just behind all that race traffic. And this is what Gary needs. He needs that traffic slowing up Hanson that maybe he can 
make up some of that ground. Now he's going too wide on the outside of some wide traffic just ahead of them. He's going around Mike Miller's limping Pontiac. We see the body damage, the rearrangement on John O'Neill's car. He's got some executives here with his sponsors, and he's uh, looking forward to putting out a good run for the Evolution 4 Ford. Battle for third is right there. The 33 of Brad Loney, the 84 of Bob Seneca has come all the way from 15th, and Mike Garvey is right behind them, hanging on in fifth, trying to get in that mix. Dave? Well, you're looking at Kurt Beckler, the crew chief for Brad Loney. He's embroiled in battle with Bob Sineker. Kurt has been very relaxed this evening so far. He's been sitting on top of the tool chest. He's been quietly standing. Everything seems to be perfect in the Brad Loney pit, even if he does get passed by Bob Sineker. And Loney with a one-race deal with the Sprite sponsorship with Econa Food, looking for a major sponsor on his Pontiac. We now see Bob Seneca, the familiar Lane Automotive Johnsonville Foods Ford, right behind him. Then that's that blue-nosed Monte Carlo of Mike Garvey. Garvey's still trying to make it in the mix. He currently stands fifth in the running after starting 16th. He only had a couple of laps in the car, went qualifying yesterday, replacing regular driver Alan Queen, who's trying to make his rookie run here in ASA, a dirt track driver who ran a lot of dirt track late model events. They went ASA racing for the car formerly owned by Rick Miller's Extrude Home Team. I'm really excited what we're seeing out of Mike Garvey. I hope he is able to stay with us here in the series because he is really putting on a show here tonight. And look at the Valvoline hood just behind him. There you see it, the 48 car of Joe Not. Remember, he had the problem with the spark plug at the beginning of the race, slipped way back. This young heart charger is right back in the middle of this one. Her chief Chris Bradley put Johnny Benson Jr. in victory lane many times. He also took him to the 1993 championship. He's joined up with his team after a stint with Leroy Troop Motorsports. Second year with Joe Not, and again, continued to improve nearly an ASA win last season in the finale. This is the 69th ASA start for Joe Knott in, in the competition here in the uh, car owned by his father. The graphic in the left-hand corner there is going to give you the top rundown of the 24 after 105 laps. And Joe Knott just continues to charge on as he goes inside and around Mike Garvey. Knott had something go down there. It looks now like he's right front problem. flat. Heard the body scrape on that one, so it appears Knott will gather it back in, but it looks like he may head down pit lane. He did catch a break under caution to stay uh, with the lead group, at least on lead lap, charge back through the field. Now under green, obviously, Knott will go down at least one lap. The team now based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. He heads down pit lane. Looks like the right front is indeed down on the Valvoline Ford. I don't know if it's a tire problem or a suspension problem. Uh, looks like the tire is going down, Dave. Well, the right front is down on Joe Knott's Valvoline Ford. They're going to go to that side. You can see a lot of smoke and dust down here. It is very dusty. In fact, some of the competitors had their cars covered earlier today to keep out sand and dust uh, down here in Florida. Those things tend to happen. But you can see that was a very flat right front tire on Joe's Ford. Tough break for Joe Knott. Let's take a look at the replay. We're going to watch Joe's tire go down. Carrying 120 miles an hour into the turns, hard on the brakes here. You see Joe Knott just ahead of Mike Harvey, who had passed half a lap ago. Entering into turn number one, you can see it's already down. The body is scraping. That's what that white smoke is. And it looks like he's hard on the brakes, trying to just keep it off the fence. And he does a nice job of that, and he brought it back in the pits. So Joe Knott returns to the action out on the racetrack, right behind Ted Smokestad. There's your leader, Scott Hansen out in front. Gary St. Amont, Brad Loney, Bob Seneker, Mike Garvey, Tony Range, Jack Landis, Mike Eddy, and the rest continue to chase. You are looking at a battle between Tony Raines and Jack Landis. This fight is for sixth place. It's going on just in front of Mike Eddy and right behind Eddie Sharp. Now, Jack Landis, as you go on board with Mike Eddy, started 19th today and has worked his way up into this battle. And Jack Landis now driving for Noah Yoder, the Maisto-backed entry. This car has been a great car over the last few years with Todd Forrest behind the wheel, but it has had terrible, terrible luck. It's always been in the thick of things, but it's never really been able to get as many victories as you would think. Todd Forrest has two wins with Noah Yoder as the owner. They had an amicable party in the ways at the season's end a year ago. Jack Lannis, a veteran Indiana uh, short track driver, getting the ride, and what a ride he's taking. Again, you mentioned starting 19th, running with the big boys in his first ASA start. 
Let's check in now with Noah Yoder, who is standing with our Dave Burns. Well, Noah, we're talking a lot about Jack right now and the job that he's doing. How does it look from your end? I tell you, he's got that Noah Yoder uh, Ford Meso Toys, uh, Harry Yoder Construction, Thunderbird working. Said he feels comfortable with it, and he's doing a good job. We're real proud of him. Now, are you talking to him a lot, or is he talking a lot to you? What kind of conversation? Yeah, we're talking to him a lot. Now, he's a fairly young driver. Are you talking him through the race, basically? Just telling him when to pass and where the slow cars are and, like, Mike coming up on him there, and so that's what we're doing, you know. New relationship for Noah Yoder this year with Jack Landis. He's doing it right now. Joining us in the booth, Harold Fair, the driver of the number 81 CarQuest Pontiac, and uh, we know you were hoping to be out there tonight. You had some problems earlier in the weekend as we watched Mike Getty working the bottom of Tony Raines. What are you seeing out here, Harold? These guys have put a lot of laps on these tires tonight. Well, I'm really surprised, Ralph. Um, we were, we already scuffed in like four sets of tires, and uh, looks like I've seen three or four different uh, guys have some blistering going on. They've had some flats, the right front, you know, that's the first one usually to go, and that's what it looks like. Harold, this is the first time, I believe, since 1982 that you're actually a spectator at an ASA event. How does, uh, how does that, you waited so long to start the season. A situation where your sponsor, CarQuest, you wanted them in the race. You're uh, involved with Alec Pinson now, and he got the nod at the start. Uh, how does it feel on the sidelines for an ASA event? Oh, it's not real good. <laughs> well, the, the CarQuest people, I want to apologize to them. It's supposed to be on a white car, but the white car is uh, kind of cut in half right now. But we was running real good, and we were really excited uh, about getting the CarQuest, the AC Delco, and our Victor Rhines uh, car out there. But uh, Alec really wants to uh, run, so we had to uh, set back and let him kind of take over tonight. So he's running my number, keep our points going. Well, it looks like the uh, rookie battle is going to get more interesting here in a hurry. The motor in the five car of Dennis Berry is letting itself go. You can see it is leaking oil, the smoke pouring out of the back, and a black flag for Dennis Berry. So he will have to go to pit road. That is a car that Brian Reffner drove to the 1995 ASA title. Of course, Brian vacated that car to move on to the Super Truck Series, drive for Ernie Irvin this year. Not a good sign. The Sterling Motor has been such a great motor for that team. Zero DNFs a year ago, and they've got motor problems at the outset, but uh, they're very strong and a very confident team about their efforts this season. You can see he went behind the wall. He's not even gonna mess with it. He goes right behind the wall. The yellow flag is out. Probably for oil, maybe coming out of that number five car. A couple of laps ago, some of the crews were reporting oil on the racetrack from our sources, so it sounds like it's been happening for a while. It got worse there as uh, the black flag was shown for Dennis Berry, a potential oil situation on the racetrack. And at these speeds, Harold, oil is your worst enemy. Oh, yeah, you don't want any oil out there. Uh, oil can throw you in a wall in a second. This is going to be a good opportunity, I think, for a lot of these guys that uh, take a look at these tires and see what's going on. I think you'll find everyone coming into pit now. Most of the teams were saying that maybe they would take two, possibly a third set of right side tires, but only need one set of lefts. We're also hearing that those, right, those new tires, when you put them on, are incredibly good for two or three laps. Then they stay good for a while, and it's not till real late where they start to trail off. Is that the experience you had? Exactly. We, uh, when we put the new tires on and we qualified here at night, it, it was a little bit slippery. You know, you gotta kind of watch what you're doing. I think we made a mistake on Alex's car and we should have put scuffs on there, but the uh, scuff tires here at night, I think they're gonna get by with two sets of rights and one left, possibly. Here comes Scott Hansen down pit lane, as well as Gary St. Amant on the split screen. Your two leaders coming in the pits. Hansen on the far end after winning the pole position. Gary St. Amant's wins for it already up in the air. These guys have been experienced crew members changing tires, but I don't know how many times they've changed tires under race conditions since last October at Jennerstown. And you can see just back there, Mike Eddie was going to take on the left side tires. Remember, he had already taken on right. Hansen and St. Amant, of course, will both take on right side tires. Seneca is out. Reigns is out. There goes Gary. Santa Monica losing a bit of time in the pit area. Hansen back underway, our race leader. Scott Hansen had the lead for all, but I believe, as you said, around five laps, and Mike Eddy took the point for a short period of time. Hansen now coming down pit lane under this sixth caution for some oil on the racetrack. If you're just tuning in, we had a, a caution early on with Chet Blanton and Dennis Lattman. Dennis, uh, Dave Sensible is involved with a number of incidents along with Ted Smokestad as we take a peek at Scott Hansen's AFCO Chevrolet. 
as the remainder of the field comes in on pit lane for their pit stops under this caution. ASA on TNN. That's exactly who we are and what we're doing. Hey, Allentown. That's right. No snow year. We're back here in Lakeland, Florida, as we're continuing to open up the season for the ASA Series. A lot of action going on in the pits under this sixth caution of the night. Let's check in with Sandy Hang. Well, right now I'm in Bob Seneker's pit. His crew was trying to add a little stagger to the right rear. That was a problem for him. They think they got that accomplished. Right next to Bob Seneker is Tony Rain's pit. He had a tight situation in the crew during the pit stop, tried to work on that. They both took on two right side tires and fuel. Let's go down to my colleague, Dave Burns. Well, Mike Garvey's crew is still looking things over here on their tires. They're checking things out. They're getting ready to go back to green. Terry Garrison, you had some troubles in the pits. What was the problem? Yeah, we had a shifter that broke off when he's coming in the pit row here and uh, certainly didn't have time to fix it, but the pit stop went well. It's all getting out, but we got him going. I think we're ready to go. Is he going to have any problems with that the rest of the race then? Well, just if we pit stop again, it's going to have to push him out again. Very good. Burn the, burn the clutch up. Okay, they did have to push him off a of pit road, but Mike Garvey is back in action. And we are about to go back to green. eyeballs were about as big as our picture window here watching that one as Alec Pinson narrowly made it through in the Carquest uh, Chevrolet Pontiac sorry Harold well you it's heard kinda... the, you heard the problems that uh, Mike Garvey is having Harold uh, big problem on a restart like that as well could be could be he uh, he might have slipped the clutch trying to get it going or uh, they might have missed the stagger too it's hard to say Mike Garvey Carter Dan Hodges and in their initial ASA effort had Alan Queen in the car from Keokuk, Iowa. A couple of other famous drivers, including Don White, came out of Keokuk, Iowa. Great stock car racing hometown as we see a couple of cars coming down pit lane, including the Bluebird and Mike Eddy. Left side. Most of the guys now will come in and take on those left side tires. Hanson doing that. Great opportunity. They basically have four fresh tires now with left side change after a brief, brief green flag period. Carl Miscotten getting his new tires. That's the pit board for Mike Garvey. They're waiting on that. They uh, trying to work things over. Scott Hansen safely out in the pits. What a break for the leaders, really, Ralph, as they uh, had right side changes. Less than a lap of green came back for left sides. Harold, that's got to be a, an advantage when you can do that. When you're out there running for 123 laps as they were on a set of rights and set of lefts, to change them so quickly, it's got to make it another new race, and it, it becomes a matter of who gets out on the pits first because yeah. they're running so quick with four fresh. Yeah, that's true. Um, this Now they can all analyze what they've done. If, if the left sides, now they get them off of there and they can check the lefts, they know what the rights are doing basically now. They find out what the lefts are doing, and then they can go from there. Left side tire change from Mike Kofer now as he uh, gets down on and off underway. The sixth car for John Freeman. That car was driven by Rick Beebe a year ago. Here's your opportunity to feel like you are really part of the race team. Racing Electronics, the official communications equipment supplier to the American Speed Association, is giving away a unit in Bearcat Scanner along with a one-year racer's frequency membership on each ASA telecast on TNN. To enter this drawing as we go back to green, send your name and address on a postcard to Racing Electronics, Box GFS 8701, Mallard Creek Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28262. We'll announce the winner during each ASA telecast on TNN throughout the year, so send in your cards today. Field sorting through now. Tony Raines is your race leader. Scott Hansen making his way back through the field. 14 cars unofficially on lead lap at last count. Tony Raines a large lead over the Ultra Custom Wheels Chevrolet of Brandon Sperling now running in second out of Yorba Linda, California. Here's the rest of the pack, including the veterans in ASA competition. Bob Seneca and Mike Eddy. Now, a lot of these guys have not been on fresh rubber for quite a while, and they're not going to be used to what these tires are going to do. That can be a problem maybe, Harold, for some of our younger, less experienced drivers. 
Well, I don't know. The, the younger guys, uh, you put good rubber on them, they'll go like heck for a couple laps. You know, the old guys, they know what's going to happen with the rubber. And with this soft tire, it's going to help everybody. It's just going to make the cars work so much better. Tony Raines is the race leader in a clean burn Pontiac. Almost a straightaway lead back to Brandon Sperling. Scott Hansen is now credited with third. In fourth is Bob Seneker. Fifth is Mike Eddy. And now they do battle off a of turn two. Down the back stretch. Take a look at this as the lap car will serve as a pick. It's Alec Pensanel with Seneker. Now, ooh, Eddie just getting by Pensanel as they squeeze into the third turn here at Lakeland. On board with Bob Seneker. Excuse me, with Mike Eddy looking at the backside of Bob Seneker. That's the battle for fourth and fifth here on the 152nd circuit of 300 in Lakeland, Florida. Going by Kenny Irwin, Jr., the USAC hot shoe finished second in two divisions at the Phoenix Copper World Classic a couple of weeks ago, running for ASA Rookie of the Year this year after the $50,000 Pat Shaw Memorial money. Harold, you obviously have uh, raced against these two quite often as you take a look at the mid-race recap. What are the strengths and weaknesses to battling with these two? If you're Mike Eddy, what are you trying to get Bob Seneca to do? Well, Bob uh, is a real smooth driver. If his car is not working at this this time, if he knows Mike's faster, it's only halfway through the race, he'll let Mike go. And then he'll kind of just fall around. Bob's a real sneaky guy. That's why they call him a sneaker. He's uh, If he thinks he can stay there, he will. But if Mike puts a nose in there, Bob will let him go. Now, the flip side of that, What's the weakness to Mike Eddy? Well, with Mike and Bob, it, I think it'd be the same thing, but uh, I think Bob would have to get his nose in a little bit further than uh, Mike would have to. Sandy, what's going on in the pits? Well, down here, the uh, of course, the tire men are very busy taking on, checking the tires. The Seneca's pit, a couple of small blisters on the tires, but overall, these guys are very pleased with how the tire wear was after this first round of pit stops. No tire problems for the fourth Thunderbird of Bob Seneker. Running a bit of a bigger carburetor here. The Thunderbirds get a uh, bigger carburetor on all the tracks that are less than a mile, which includes this facility here. How much of an advantage do you think that is or is it? Well, on this track, Ralph, uh, I really believe that the Fords have a definite advantage. Uh, that carburetor can be worth uh, 15 to 20 horsepower. 10 horsepower we can kind of live with but when you give them 15 and 20 it's kind of a disadvantage but then again the Ford's a little bit heavier than us so it all works out. Apparently it balanced out there because Mike Eddy put the Pontiac around him. Dave Burns is caught up with Mike Garvey the 23 who's had his problems tonight Dave. Well, they're working on the rear end of his car right now. Uh, Mike there was a spin out obviously coming out of two. What was the problem? Dave I think we broke an axle and the car just turned around so quick. Uh, just want to thank all the guys for not hitting us. I mean, it just took off and spun. No warning, no anything. It's, uh, it's a real shame. The St. Louis gear, uh, Chevy Monte Carlo was running good. We had a good car for the long run, and it's unfortunate that happened. Now, Mike, a lot of the fans down here recognize you, but you really didn't plan to be in an ASA car this weekend before this week, did you? No, I sure didn't. I came down here to run the Hooters Cup race, and I'll tell you what, we broke her in on that one last night leading it. Now, tonight this. I don't know what's going on with these rear ends, but... Uh, they had a little bit of problems getting qualified, so they came down and asked me to run the car. We qualified the uh, fastest second round, which was, I think, seventh fastest overall. It's a good race car, and I was just happy to help the Hodges Motors Force team out. Now, tough break to see Mike Garvey out of it. Mike Getty is still in the middle. Tony Raines is your leader, however. Baker Motorsports entry having a great night and a beautiful night here in Lakeland. Well, we are under caution for the eighth time, and it is courtesy of car number eight, Carl Miss Scott. We'll show you what took place over here in turn number four just moments ago. Into the turn, he's outside of Rick Beebe in that 15 car. Beebe had to get on the binders. They got together momentarily, trying to save it was Carl Miss Scott, but you could see the car was fishtailing, got away from him. Almost saved her, got around here on the apron in turn number four. No damage done. Carl James continued on, but just slight contact, Harold, at heavy speeds. Entering the corner, you're on the brakes, you're trying for position. You hope the guy knows you're there. It's kind of a difficult spot to be in. Yeah, it looked like uh, Rick was trying to get his nose in there, and uh, I think Carl was up a little bit high, and he thought there was enough room, and then Carl kind of come down on him a little bit, I 
think. Well, glad to have Harold Fair in this booth here with us here at Lakeland, Florida. On well, a beautiful we're evening. Step away just for another second and finish getting everybody lined back up so we can throw the green and get back at it. USA International Speedway is where the season opener is coming to you as we get set to go back to green. Scott Hansen is your leader. Mike Getty sits in second. Bob Seneca, Brad Loney, and Jack Landis round out the top five. Tony Joe. Raines, Gary St. Amant, Brandon Sperling, Sidney Peterson, and Joey Knott round out the top ten. Knott is running ten. First car off lead lap, trying to get that lap back from Scott Hansen. On board with Mike Eddy, the GM Goodrich Service Pontiac. As he's trying to chase down Hansen, he's got that lap car cushion. It's Joe Knott, but Knott's awfully quick at this point in the race. Drifts up a bit off of turn number two. 14 degrees the banking here in Lakeland, Speed, in Lakeland Florida at USA International Speedway. Here's your battle for third. There it is. Bob Seneker, Brad Loney, fighting it out for third place. Seneker benefited from what could have been Brad Loney's only victory in 1995 at Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He and Mike Eddy, that being Brad Loney, the hometown favorite in Cedar Rapids, and Mike Eddy got together in the closing laps, handing the win to Bob Seneker, one of his 48 career, excuse me, 48 career victories, I believe, in ASA. So he'll take it any way he can. It looks like Mike Eddy's trying to take the spot on the racetrack from Joe Knott. Not running in 10th position. One lap down to the leaders. Mike Eddy in the GM Goodrun service. Pontiac here is second officially in the scoring run now with Bob Seneger closing in with side-by-side -side racing here on the three-quarter mile oval in Lakeland. At this point in the race, Harold, you've got a lap car that fast. We're speaking with Harold Fair here on TNN. And Harold not being in the car this evening, but able to watch it with you in your living room. At this point in the race, do you want a lap car running as quick as Joe is? And if he is, how long do you give him before you give him a nudge and say, I want to get on by? Well, Joe did just did the smart thing. You know, Bob's coming up on Mike. Mike's a lap ahead of him. You know, unless he can really get out there and stay in front of him, you know, you don't want something to happen that just almost happened there. You got a hold of him, you know, and he's a lap down. You got to let him, you know, race for the, the lead there. I had to check. I had to. Huh. You said 48, and I had to check. What is it? It's 79. Mike Eddy's got 48. Well, actually, you're close once again there, Skippy. It's 51 for Mike Eddy. All right, I'm looking at before 1995, <laughs> then, because that's right. three that wins. Yes, that's right. It would have been 48 then. So All right, Skippy, nice where's that from? I don't know. I, just can't right. I, I was just thinking about that, though, because Bob Zander is the winningest is driver, the winningest driver in the series. Well, if Chris Imanik, it kind of can get one thing wrong, I guess I can get one there thing wrong. There you go. All right. There you go. Mike Eddy and Bob Seneca continuing the battle for second place. A lot of the drivers, Harold, were saying that the bottom is definitely the fast way around here, but if you get too close to that apron, that apron can really bite you here because of the way it is shaped with the 14 degree bank. Yes, it's, uh, if you go over that line, it'll really upset the car. But the track is really kind of forgiving. If you do get down there, you slide right back up on the track. and and you're fine. The, the bottom group is definitely the fastest way around. You've got to be pretty quick to get on the outside and get around a fast guy. Are you surprised by how quick Hanson has been here all weekend? Well, Scott was here last year, and, uh, you know, he won that Hooters race, so I think he had a bit of an advantage. He, he knew what to come here with, and uh, we had four days to, to practice and mess around, so I think he had a bit of an advantage on all of us. Not everybody had the chance to get down here and run. Joey Knott was down here. You mentioned uh, Dennis Berry came down and actually tested. Here's a look at the interval back to second. Almost two seconds. Nothing to be panicky about yet, I would think, huh, Harold? No, not yet. I've been watching Scott, and uh, he seems to have an awful lot of power on everybody. That Chevy really seems to, seems to have everything, even the Fords covered down the straightaways. Take a look at the interval once again. About the same. One of the things they say is new about this TZR motor is the torque curve 
really helps get the car off the corners. Which in a place like this where you got to get a good drive in the long straightaway, it's got to be a big advantage of that. Well, uh, you know, you can go two ways with that. You know, you need the torque off the corners, but you don't want to lose it at the end of the straightaway either. My motor was uh, a little bit down. And, uh, it didn't have much torque coming off the corners. We were thinking about putting more gear into it, but unfortunately, we didn't get that chance. Now well, we've got 118 laps to go. The next ASA race is going to be in Columbus, Ohio, later in the month of April. Harold, thanks for stopping by and joining us. I know we'll see you there in April. My pleasure, Ralph. Stay with us. We'll be back. The 1996 AC Delco Challenge Series live on TNN is brought to you in part by Win Oil Company, makers of quality automotive car care products. Remember, when it's wins, it works. And by your GM Goodrich service dealer. We want your business. Scott Hansen continues to lead here in Lakeland, Florida. We're about 30 miles east of the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area and about 50 miles west of Orlando, right on I-4, if you know anything about the uh, area around here in Florida, to give you an idea of where we're at. Beautiful facility down here at USA International Speedway. Scott Hansen right now is having a great time with it. And he's getting ready to go around Mike Kofer in the six car. Kofer in the red, white, and black number six right now is running in 15th place. I'm going to be real blatant about this and get this out early because I know you're going to hammer me about what? this. I'm a huge 49er fan. Kofer used to be the place kicker for the 49ers. He got them to two Super Bowls and helped them win two of those. Then he went on to the Indianapolis Colts. He has one in the Southwest Tour Division out at Stockton 99 Speedway, trying his hand for the first time at ASA Racing. And one of his former 49er teammates, Harris Barton, He's giving him a helping hand with this. You can see Mike waving him over. He's out here trying to get some experience. Really loves this series and wants to stay with it. He said he's got a problem, though. Mike went to North Carolina State. Harris went to the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Huge rivalry there. NC State just beat Chapel Hill. He thinks his money supply just got cut off. He's been calling Harris. Harris won't answer the phone. You know, he does have the Gamecocks colors on his car as well. Now, I got it out early. 49er fan, if I get a little obnoxious about talking about Kofer, you got to cut me some slack. I'm from Wisconsin. How about those Packers, Ralph? Anyway, back up front, it is Scott Hansen. I'm going to ignore the Packers, too. <laughs> Scott Hansen, a Wisconsin driver, has won uh, the majority of this event. Mike Eddy's taking a turn to lead. Tony Raines had a lead for a while. And at through pit stop, Scott Hansen has regained the advantage. Mike Eddy's running in second. Eddie caught a break early on in the race. If you just joined us here on TNN, he had a tire going down almost simultaneously. A caution flag flew for a spinning uh, machine. So he got the break he needed staying on lead lap. He now is hunting down Scott Hansen. Big problems with the 07. That car of Jack Landis has been very strong, but it's smoking, Dave. See, he's getting underneath the 15 car right now going into turn number three, but the smoke they think it's a little rear end grease. At first they thought it was tire rubbing against the body, but it's gotten a little bit more serious. And now Jack Landis is being watched very closely by ASA officials. They haven't given him the black flag yet, but they do believe that it's rear end grease on the 07 car. Boy, what a shame, Jim. He had started at 15th, got all the way up to 5th. Once again, we've talked about the, uh, actually started 19th, all the way up to 5th. We've talked about the bad luck this car has had. Todd Forbes can tell you all about it. They're extremely fast when they're going good. I mean, when they're qualifying, they qualify well. When they run fast, they're up with the leaders. You can see what he advanced up to fifth today. It seemed like either Todd Forbes or this team loves the high banks, and it continues to be successful to this point for the No Yoder team. That's right. This car has always run well at places like Toledo and I-70, places like that. Maysto back sponsoring the No Yoder Ford. Once again, the makers of the uh, die cast models. They had a full display on wheels as the race fans at every AC Delco Challenge Series event are allowed on the racetrack to mingle amongst the race cars and drivers. They had a full rolling scale, I believe, of every car they make, at least one model, on a rolling uh, garage cart rack. You would see a shelving unit full of toys from Ace, though. Tony Raines in the 87 car under the guidance of Howie Gladow running right behind him. Tony right now in our new scoring system placed in sixth place. Trying to find a way around the land as it does, so that moves him up to fifth. This is a team here that I think a lot of people, including myself, figure that they're going to be in the thick of the points chase this year. Howie Ledow is a tremendous crew chief.
Tony Rain seems to be a driver who just hasn't had the right guidance to get him where he wanted to be, and that is racing for wins week in and week out. And they've had a year or so together. They think now is the time to run for the championship, picking up wins, for example, last year at Topeka. Tony says they're not going to worry about points early on, kind of taking a Jeff Gordon approach to things. Go out there, try to win races, try to run strong, let the points in the championship fight come to you. Very strong team. Howie Little voted on by his peers a year ago as the best crew chief in AC Delco Challenge Series. Tony Raines, to his credit, was told by Howie Leto, hey, you're the smartest driver I have worked with. And he's worked with a number of great drivers, including the late Pat Shower in his rookie run. He's also powered or been the effort uh, behind Ted Musgrave and Scott Hansen's rookie runs and rookie series championships in ASA. Hansen be a while working the outside of Alec Pinsano. And if I'm not mistaken, Mike Eddy is closing in on old number 53. We showed you the number earlier, 1.6 seconds. Now you can see it's only three car lengths as they go into turn number three. Alec Pinson to the inside will hold up Eddie momentarily as he cannot run single file off the corner. He has to go double file at the start and finish line. Here we see Hansen again closing in quickly as Mike Eddie to the lap car. Ralph, it didn't seem like there was any problem with uh, with Mike Eddie going on by, so we may see a battle in the next few laps with Hansen finally getting a dog fight with Eddie. He is having no problems at all right now. Everything going well on both of these cars as the yellow flag has come out here at the start finish line in the hands of Roger Slack. Scanning the racetrack and uh, don't see anything. But we did have a smoking 07. Maybe they saw something out on the racetrack from that. We'll figure it out. The caution flag waves for the ninth time here at USA International Speedway. So we're under yellow once again. There's your top 10. We're back to USA International Speedway. And hey, John Force is not the only top ranking driver to come out of Yorba Linda, California. So is Brandon Sperling racing here on the ASA Tour. Brandon having a great night here tonight. Ran for part of the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year in 1995. Had some problems, struggled a little bit. His uh, father, Norm, goes to all the races with him, and they used to be involved in some drag racing. Used to run a funny car out on the West Coast, and now they're back here running ASA. Dave, you got more on Brandon? Yeah, Charlie Sigmund is the crew chief here for Brandon. He's been running extremely strong today. He had a top 10 finish at the end of the last year. Uh, pretty good momentum for the youngster. Yeah, we struggled when we first got down here. The car, uh, we just didn't get hooked up. We missed Thursday practice, but we worked together and we got it going and we're gonna come to the stay in the front and try to lead a couple laps here. Well now, uh, are you gonna bring him in later on then? It looks like he's gonna have to stop one more time. Yeah, one more time. We're gonna caution him fuel and we're gonna go for it. Brandon is uh, in his second year of competition. Uh, have you seen him mature at all as a driver in, after that first year? Yeah, well, we hope to win several races this year, maybe two or three and going up to the bus ranks next year. Okay, Brandon Sperling looking for a stepping stone here at ASA. Some of the drivers tend to stay in ASA. Others will make the transition. Looks like Brandon's going to work his way through ASA. Wow, that'd be a big story if Brandon Sperling could come out here and get his uh, first ASA win here tonight at Lakeland, Florida. A reminder that this telecast is a copyrighted production of Group 5 Sports, a division of Group 5 Sales Incorporated. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this telecast that the written consent of Group 5 Sports is prohibited. Brandon now calls Charlotte, Charlotte, I live there and I can't even say it, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where that ASA car number 51 is housed and he gets together with Joey Knott right at the start finish line as we go back to green. Looks like Brandon Sperling wanted the respect of the other black car. Mike Getty gets on restarts. They see the good wrench logo and they move over. Sperling got none of that respect. Now he's got a handle. Yeah, he's Mike smoking. Getty going to the three. He's got some smoke coming out of that car now, Jim. You can see it. Let's watch from Mike Getty's car. Watch the right corner. The right rear corner. Ah, uh, Mike's going to get by him too soon. We won't be able to see. Ah, uh, there's a little bump in there. And Brandon waves him by. Brandon's got a problem and he waves Mike Getty by. What a shame for Brandon Sperling. A great night going, and the yellow comes out. Let's take a look at the restart once again. Brandon Sperling 
behind two lap cars on the restart of this ninth and most recent caution. The tenth caution flag has just flown. But take a look here. Joe Knott wants to go to the inside and stay ahead of Brandon Sperling. Sperling only has two groups to run. Knott was in the other and pinched him way down to the apron. That white stuff flying was, I believe, some uh, oil dry. But going into turn number one, Sperling had a problem. They touched. That might have caused the problem that put Brandon Sperling now behind the wall. It was definitely the cause of the problem. I just wasn't real sure about them getting together. I don't know. Hard to tell who was coming up and who was going down. With that caution, Joe Knott getting ahead of Brandon Sperling, who was the leader, got back on lead lap as he comes in pits. Another driver who is looking for his first ever win is Joey Knott, Sandy. That's right, I was just uh, monitoring the radios. Joe's getting a little bit tired according to his crew. They're gonna try to pass him a water bottle. He's looking good for the rest of this race. Uh, you can see the water bottle being handed over to the youngster. So Joe Knott searching for his first ever career ASA win as Chris Bradley and the crew go to work on the Valvoline Raby number 48. Thought maybe he was gonna get that win at Jennerstown last year. Instead, went to Bob Seneca. Stay with us, we're coming back to Lakeland after this. Move, Dave. RB and the boys will be coming up later on, but Bob Seneker and the guys are going racing here in Lakeland. The Bluebird of Bob Seneker storms down the backstretch here in Lakeland, Florida, as we continue to bring you live ASA coverage here on TNN. The 1996 season opener is underway. Scott Hansen, Brad Loney, Tony Raines, and Gary St. Amont chase after the Thunderbird of Bob Seneker. While they're racing out onto the racetrack with 80 to go, the 1994 ACW Challenge Series champion, a two-time champion on the ASA Tour, Butch Miller, driver of the Raybestos Ford Craftsman Super Truck, back here watching his old friends racing once again. And we got a yellow again. The 81, Alec Pinsano, turn four. That would be yellow number 10. 11. 11. 11 cautions. Last couple for debris, Alec Pinsano getting loose in turn number four. And Dave Burns is caught up with Brandon Sperling. Had a great run going, Dave. Well, Brandon sure did. Uh, you were up in the lead, uh, shown in the lead. You were just waiting for another yellow, you told me. Uh, what finally put you out? Uh, we, were, we were running good. Uh, the rear end just let go. And, uh, we are hoping to get another yellow. We only had 100 laps to go. Hoping to get another yellow, uh, get a set of tires and a little splash of fuel, and we'd have been set to go. Um, we had trouble all weekend long. We drove off the trailer, and uh, we, we struggled ever since we got off the trailer. Missed the first practice, and uh, it, did, it just came together in the race. We, we set it up uh, tight, and it started to come, come together, and it got neutral as the tires got old. And I was just biding my time, you know, saving the tires, just waiting until the end to press hard. Brandon Sperling, a young driver with a promising future in stock car racing, out early tonight. Uh, we'll see a lot more of that young California native before the 96 season is over, you can be sure of that. Butch Miller, I said, is joining us. Butch, Brandon was talking about the rear end letting go. There really isn't anything you can do when the rear end goes. Nothing whatsoever, except for chase it for a while and then uh, hope for the best. And we're under our 11th yellow here, and I saw your big rig parked off turn three. Uh, I know you weren't trying to enter here tonight. What do you got going? Well, we're gonna, uh, we're, we're waiting for the rubber to get laid down, which is great. All the ASA cars are, are laying that down for us. And uh, we're gonna test Monday and Tuesday. We've got a new, a brand new PN96, uh, in other words, a 97 Ford F-150 pickup truck. We're gonna test that and compare it to our old 95 mile. You had a great season with the uh, super trucks last year, and we also got to see you run a little ASA as we get set to go back to green. You gonna come back and run with us maybe once or twice? I want to, and, uh, I'm trying to work things out so we can. However, um, our schedule is, is really tight. It's, it's tough to do it, but uh, who knows? <laughs> Boy, we'd love to have you back with us. What do you think out of what you've seen so far? You've raced for this championship before. Bob Seneker is leading, but Hanson has been so strong. You see any weaknesses in that 53? None whatsoever. I tried to find, I was clocking every car out there, trying to find somebody that could close up on that 53. And, uh, I think Scott could just run away at will. And uh, it's just great to be able to sit in a car like that. Not only does that thing handle good down, to, down the, in the corners, but it's, it does one of those uh, handles good down the straightaway, too. When you won your ASA championship in 94, you did it behind the wheel of a Ford Thunderbird. It does get the bigger carburetor on this racetrack. How much of an advantage is that for Bob? Not as much as you'd think. Uh, 
They've got those 600s working good, and I don't believe it's much more than about 10 or 15 horse. But you see Bob's biggest problem down the straightaway right now is he's about five miles an hour, or he's just a little soft off the corner because you'll see his, his back end twitching a little bit. He can't get fully into that 750 carburetor. So Scott's Scott's wide open, and uh, he gets a good toe hold off and can actually pull Bob down the straightaway. The GM products, oh, and we got the 12. Caution, waving. John O'Neill spinning up in turns one and two in heavy traffic. They're running single file very tightly together. The Evolution Ford car cover fabric. Kimberly Clark sponsored Ford Thunderbird now gets it righted, but it did, does produce our 12th caution of the afternoon. John O'Neill's put in lots of laps at I-70. We'll be racing there live as well later this year with the ASA Tour. Stay with us. We're coming back. Well, racing season's opening up all around the country, and the ASA Tour opening up here tonight in Lakeland, Florida. And the green flag about to wave again after the 12th caution of the evening. Bob Seneca, this race's fifth leader. Scott Hansen led the majority of the laps thus far, and now they once again set sail down the backstretch here in Lakeland. Seneca leader, but here comes Hansen. Looks like Scott's just testing the waters here, Bush. Well, He's testing the back of Bob's Ford right now, but Scott's fast. The only guy I could find that was even kind of close to him was Joe Knapp when he was a lap down. Oh, boy. That's tight. That's, that's a bit tight. serious. Well, and that's that's why I was warning if he was just testing the waters, because if what you're saying is right and he is that fast, why would you push that hard when 68 laps to go? Would you? He's a racer, and, and Scott's a really good racer. And the best place to be is about a half a straightaway in front of the rest of the pack, and that's where he wants to be. That's the safest place and the most fun place. So Scott Hansen going for it here tonight as he tries to get around Bob Seneca any way he can. He's got to be careful, though, because there's a lot of good cars sitting behind him. That door opens up a little too much. He's going to see Loney, Reigns, and St. Amon and Eddie come sliding on through as you go on board with Gary St. Amon. Man, this racing is great. I love it. What did you enjoy the most about racing ASA when you were out there as far as competing against these guys? I'm just, I'm the world's best race fan. And, you know, here I am at the races. I got a night off. I'm at the races instead of being where I'm supposed to be, I, I guess, which is the motel room. But I come to the racetrack. I come to watch. And I used to sit in the best seat in the house which was the race car, you know, and, and I just I just loved it. I, I like racing. ASA, look at Bob slide that car off. He's a hard racer. How much of this from Scott Hansen is Bob Seneca going to take, and what kind of a trick can he lay back on Scott? Bob, you, you never can tell about that guy. You know, he's been sitting back there fifth, sixth, seventh all race long. You know, now it kind of looks like he might try and drive away, and I, I can't believe it. that's possible with the car as loose as it is. It looks really slippery up off the corner. Dave, what do you think about all this? Well, Scott Hansen's pit will say to you that they're good to go for the rest of the way, and we've got trouble on the front straightaway. Hansen, though, appears to be good to go. Well, there you see Bill Barron into the wall. Mike Miller has big problems as well. Mike, uh, lots of problems on the 18. I will tell you, however, that Mike Miller has won an award already here this weekend. Mike earlier tonight was named the whiner of the weekend by the ASA technical staff. They gave him a uh, pacifier strapped onto a credential holder. Mike took it all in good jest, although I don't think he's gonna take the fact that the 18 is beaten, battered, and missing a lot of parts in good jest. Mike's had a lot of luck tonight. Unfortunately, it's all been bad because every time I look, if there's a crash, Mike seems to want to be in it. Bill Baird? Out of Sturgis, Kentucky, qualified better than he ever has, Jim, but once again, he ends up against the wall. And Bill was fortunate enough to come down and test as well. He had a car they were working on for a complete day of testing, and Butch, you know how that goes, where you work on certain things. They had their spare car sitting in the trailer. They just said, well, let's get it out there. Let's see if we can just shake it down in case we need it. The car was within a tenth off the truck, so those guys were battling all day to get to where the setup was on the car sitting in the hauler. So that's got to be kind of frustrating, but Bill had a good run going today. That's kind of what we're not looking for. We're, we're looking for our, our, our 97 F-150 to be a lot faster than our 95. However, the 95's got a lot more laps on it, so it's got, it's got more experience. It's... Well, we're happy to see Bill Baird climb out of the car. We got a replay of this one. 
Take a look, tell me what you see here, Butch. It's a lot of spinning and banging, huh? I still miss the beginning of it, and I, I, I don't know how Mike knocked that. Uh, it looks like he broke an A-frame right there. Or... They were about even, it looked like. Uh, guys coming off the fourth turn, Mike uh, Mike Miller inside of uh, of the 26 car, Bill Baird, and it looks like that uh, either they got together or maybe with uh, previous damage on Mike Miller's car, as you said, Butch, it looked like he got a little high there. So Mike Miller's night is over here at Lakeland, Florida. We'll come back for more. Season opener after this. Who can forget this wins winning move from the championship race at Jennerstown last fall? Watch this. Bob Seneker, the winner. In each televised race in 1996, we will again bring you that exciting move that made the difference between victory and defeat. So look for the wins winning move in each race telecast. Remember, when it's wins, it works. I bet you Bob Seneker hopes he uh, wins it a little bit easier. Mike Miller out for the night. Got a bag of popcorn with him, I think. Sandy Hang is down there. Sandy, uh, yeah, what's up with Bill? Well, I'm with Bill Baird. He looks like he's out for the night, too. Got caught in that first snag. Then what happened just now? Well, uh, we got the car back together. You know, the crew got the Saturn machine, uh, Vaveline car, and uh, just going great again and um, we were a lot of laps down trying to let the other the faster cars go on the inside and I really don't know what happened uh, me and Mike got tangled up coming off four and put me in the wall and we're done for the day it's been rough it's been a rough day for you but what do you think of the track for a season opener well we come down here last November running the Hooters race and I fell in love with this place you know we qualified 11th here until we got uh, I think we was running ninth and or ninth or tenth and uh Got into that blown engine uh, about 25 laps into it, and everything's gone downhill from there. Okay, that's Bill Baird here with some tough luck today. Bill's actually the one who should have popcorn. He's working on a new popcorn sponsorship deal, and uh, it says it tastes pretty good. Free samples are always welcome here in the TNN booth. You betcha. Absolutely. Bob Sineker and Scott Hansen getting ready to go at it. They're all watching us on TV. Okay, hey everybody wave. They can't hear us, Ralph. There's cars running outside. Uh, yeah, there they go. Somebody heard us. Green flag. Hansen sneaks right up underneath Bob Seneker. Got to get him on the inside, but there's no, whoa, they do get together in there. And Brad Loney's going to sneak by, and Mike Eddy's going to try it as well. And Reigns gets the door slammed shut in his face. Well, Butch? I kind of like the way Brad got into second there. When, when he got Bob right on the outside of him, he just kind of like made it right and hit it for the wall. Okay, now I know it's short track stock car racing, and I know there's uh, bumping is expected. How do you view that? Is that a screen slide? I don't know. I, I, I never thought that racing was a contact sport. However, it turned out that way. <laughs> Hell, it worked for Scott Hansen. We just saw a little bit of it right there. Short track stock car racing at its best, and Scott Hansen is one of the best in the business when it comes to getting the job done in this form of racing. And Hansen has gotten himself back to the front. Now, Brad Loney has had his share of lessons in the closing stages of fiercely contested ASA races. You might remember last year in Cedar Rapids, he thought he was gonna get his first win, and he had a rough situation with Mike Eddy as Eddie slides past him to take away second place now. And Seneca coming right back at him. It's gonna be interesting to see how much Brad Loney learned from all that and what he is able to do with that new knowledge here now in the future. What do you think, Dave? Well, Kurt Beckler has been watching Brad slip back just a position. Kurt, how good is the car for Brad to go to the end? Well, we tightened up the Flex Steel Sprite, Kano Foods, h and Motor Express car a little bit. We, we had to loose him up. He's been tight the whole race, the last pit stop. We loosened him up a little bit. 
I think it's about as good as it's going to get right here. I'd, I'd love to say we was holding back a little bit for the end, but I think I'd be lying. So we're just going to do the best we can do. This is as good as we got. Okay, Brad's got a great future. He's also got one of the younger pit crews in ASA, Kurt Beckler, the uh, foreman of the whole effort here for Brad Loney. Boy, and they are tough, too. And Butch, there goes Hanson. He's pulling away. Yeah, he is. He's, he's really strong. You know, I, I wish you could see that uh, that pass. That was a typical Goodrich pass that uh, Mike Getty put on Brad Loney there. <laughs> that was, that was a la Dale Earnhardt. He, he scooted up going into the corner and uh, diamonded it off and cut right underneath him and had a good line on him going down a straightaway. What a great move. Diamonding off a corner is a big key to going fast around these racetracks and making moves like that. Well, it's not really, diming it off a corner is important. It's generally not the fastest way around the racetrack. However, it's useful and you, you position the car so you've got a, a great run at a guy off a corner and that's a, that's a good way to do it. On board with Gary St. Amant, the Columbus, Ohio native, running right behind Tony Raines. St. Amant sits in sixth in the wins car. around with the leaders and works amongst Mike Getty and Bob Seneker, you being a veteran in ASA until moving into the truck division. How much do you think it's a confidence builder for Brad Loney to come in here, first race of the year, run with Bob Seneker, run with Mike Getty? How much do you think that's going to carry over to Columbus the next race when he knows he can run with these guys right off the box? Well, Brad, Brad uh, ever since the, the first day I've seen him, has been a good competitor. I just saw Seneker sneak underneath him there for, for a, a good pass, but, but Brad's fast. And he's a confident driver. He's also very aggressive. He's going to be, he's good now, and he's going to be better in the future. Seems to me like he is really mature. He's not afraid to get in there and get physical with these guys. As you can see, he really held his own with Bob Seneker, yet he's not driving overly aggressive. You think that's a fair statement, Bush? I think that's a fair statement, but uh, uh, it's also a fair statement to say that if need be, Brad could drive the wheels off that thing. And uh, if need be, he'd be the first one to burn the rubber off, too. He could do it. The Cedar Rapids, Iowa native, uh, the pride of that town by far. We make this year two stops at Cedar Rapids at Hawkeye Downs. Brad Loney winning the pole there last year and almost picking up his first win. And boy, is that crowd up there behind this young driver. They will be cheering loudly for Brad when we get up there later this summer. So Mike Eddy now all over the back side of Scott Hansen as we're on board with him. What do you do now, Butch, if you're Mike? You, you try this outside, you got to know Hansen ain't going to give you much on the bottom. Well, you know, Scott's giving him the outside of the racetrack. You watch Scott will run a, a car width off the... He's either got something wrong or he just thinks Mike's faster than going to let him by. My read on that, Butch, is he does not want to give up the inside groove. If Mike Eddy nudges Scott Hansen at all and Hansen gets loose, Eddie's gone to the inside. Hansen, I believe, at this point is saying, Mike, you got the outside. If you want it, I'm not letting you have the bottom. That's that's right. You know, Scott's a really fair racer. And, uh, uh, you know, this is real gentleman-like, you know. And, and this also makes it so if if Mike were to decide to give him a pop in the back, that wouldn't be right at all because Scott is giving him a whole racetrack to run on. So here we go. The seven-time ASA champion going up against one of the guys who everybody who's involved with this series feels should probably have at least one championship, but doesn't. Scott Hansen, and Hansen wants an ASA title badly. And what's, this what's, is one year he really thinks he can get it. What's that blue thing back there? Yeah, a guy with an ASA title to his own right, Bob Seneker. And Mike Cooper's gonna get a good look at this battle. What a great race. They call it the Great American Dream Series for that reason, but some great, great short track racing, the premier short track racing in the country. Here at the American Speed Association, AC Delco Challenge Series, AC Delco renews through 1997 as a title sponsor. And again, TNN's involved with the National Network only can increase the awareness of the country of how great the racing is here in ASA. It's fantastic. The and Chevy Monte Carlo bodied entry of... Oh, they're going to come down pit road. Oh, look at <laughs> they that. They go any lower. <laughs> oh, Hampton ran him all the way down to the bottom. Hanson's giving it And here comes the T-Bird. 
the Pontiac, the Chevy, and the Ford all have it added here in the season opener at Lakeland, Florida for the AC Delco Challenge Series. This time by 35 circuits to remain, so we'll try to breathe between now and then, guys. It's pretty exciting stuff. Well, if the snow hasn't melted where you are, hang on, because things are heating up here. We might be able to melt a little for you. Does anybody have an advantage here in position-wise? Well, yeah, Scott. The guy in front, I, yeah. Right, but I can't, I can't, I still can't figure out why Scott is, is running the, the halfway down the straightaway, because, uh, it almost seems like if he'd start to use the whole racetrack, he might be able to pull away. But he, he's fast through the corner, and he seems to have plenty of speed down the straightaway. He's just, I don't know what he's doing. Looked like Mike really fought the car in turns three and four on the last lap. See if he's developing a problem there. Boy, old sneaky back there. <laughs> one slip by either one of them, and, and, a, and the blue car is going to be in front. On board with Mike Getty, the polar bear to the outside. He's got him. And Seneca comes with him. Hansen fighting for his life right now as Seneca and Eddie go by. Oh, and you can see that 84 sliding through the turns a little bit. 268 of 300 laps in the books. to me like that tail on the 88 is a little bit happy. Seems to be dancing around a little bit on Mike. Yeah, but Mike can, Mike can drive it like that. That's the way he likes it best. That's that's Mike's favorite way. And uh, Coach Sneaky sets his up about the same. We're speaking with three-time ASA champion Butch Miller here in the booth on TNN. Very much a part of some great finishes like this one. Berlin Raceway with Mike Eddy comes to mind in 1994, which where you guys ran like this for the last 50 laps, it seemed like. But take a look at fifth place here. This is a great battle. Brad Loney hanging on with the, the wins Ford as we go on top of the Ford of Gary St. Amant, the newlywed, as he goes into turn number three. These guys have been battling as about as close as the leaders have. They share the same straightaway as the top three as they come off of turn number four now. It looks like Loney, for now, has the edge. Well, Brad's running strong, and... and uh... It seems like the longer they run, the, the stronger they're getting. This car's real straight up off the corner. Uh, looks good. Right on the bottom of the racetrack. I mean, that looks like a great, a great group. Look at that thing. No slipping up off the corner. Looks great. Tony Raines right behind them in sixth position. And it's Jack Landis, Rick Beebe, Joe Knott, and Cindy Peterson having a tremendous evening. She rounds out in the top 10. Cindy is another one of the AC Delco Challenge Series drivers looking for some major backing. She has a sponsorship from Toba Construction, a local company back from Wisconsin, but it appears that she is one of the drivers fighting for some corporate sponsorship on her quarter panel, so a good run here is imperative for her 96 season. Well, as you heard, Cindy Peterson having a great night. We'll try to work our way back through the field a little bit and show you some of the other cars and bring you up the speed. Tony Raines runs in sixth in the 87, Rick Beebe is in eighth the car 15 right behind him and then it's tony roper in the 10 car lap down round he is in yeah he's one lap down but running in 12. the one car is kevin sawinski or kevin's uh had a rough night tonight not listed in the top 21. saint amont to the inside of brad loney boy loney strong on that outside oh he pinched it down a little bit going into court Man. Big incident. Cindy Peterson, um, Bob Seneker, Scott Hansen, John Cadman as well. The 70 car sitting sideways. A huge impact on the backstretch coming just off of turn two. We see Tony Raines involved as well. So the, the front runners getting together. There's Cindy getting out of her car. She's we heard the pop up here, guys. Away. Yeah, it was a big hit. Big hit. She's up against the wall, but it looks okay. There is the 70 car of Cadman. He lowers the net. He's all right. Scott Hansen is out of the car. 
He's walking over to where Cindy is at. That's tough for Scott. He ran so good all night long. Oh, you hate that for him. He was having a great night. He's going to check on Cindy and see if she's OK. I think Cindy hit the wall really hard there. And sometimes when you, you're, you're, you've you got your foot, especially a left foot, you have it on the brake pedal. And it just takes, absorbs the whole crash. And it, it gives you a little sprain. So that's probably what's happened to her. She didn't look very, like she was hurting too bad. True gentleman, Scott Hanson, making sure everybody's OK. Bob Seneker's out, and he's OK. Looks like one of our pit reporters is standing by. Some tough luck here for you tonight. What happened out there? Oh, uh, the car spun uh, coming off the second turn. I did everything I did to avoid him, but I, I couldn't miss him. He's coming too fast. Coming too fast. You and Hanson back and forth. You're just going at it there for a while. That was Mike Eddy. That was Mike Eddy. Well, you were up there in the hunt there for a while. How was the car handling at that point? Well, it was getting better and better, but this stuff happens. Just that's it from Bob Seneker. That stuff happens. Dave Burns has already caught up with Scott Hansen. Well, Dave. Scott and I are standing down here uh, at the scene of the accident. Scott, what happened? I really don't know. I mean, I come up out of two wide open. You know, I've been having handling problems with the brakes, and nobody said nothing. I just run right flat out into I tried turning left so I wouldn't T-bone her, you know, and hit her broadside. And I just, I had no clue she was there. You walked right over. She looks okay to you from uh, yeah, right down? She's, she's, she's feeling bad because she was there, you know, and created the wreck, but I don't know what started it, but uh, I just had no clue she was there. Well, Scott, you've won here before in a different division. Uh, how good was your car tonight? Did you feel like you could get back into it and move back ahead? No, I ran out of brakes uh, halfway through the race. I ran out of front brakes, and that's what happened here at the end. And I just, the car was so loose, getting in, I was sliding rear tires. And, I just wanted to try and keep up. You know, I knew I couldn't race some guys. And, you know, I come out of the corner and there she was. I just, like I said, I just turned it left. And, you know, we ended up broadside instead of T-bone because uh, who knows what would happen. Scott, do you have anything to take with you to Columbus in two months from now from uh, your experience this weekend? I don't have anything to take home from this weekend. <laughs> They're both wrecked really bad. And we're just going to go home and start over. I saw Cindy Peterson being helped to the ambulance by her car owner, Tom Nickerson. Or Park well, Scott gave a pretty good description of what took place, but keep your eyes on this. Watch the 53 all of a sudden, you're going to see Cindy sitting right here. Bob Seneker gets the first piece of Cindy, a huge impact. He nearly goes over. This is the same car Seneker had in Jennerstown at the season finale, so this car has seen a lot. It's like a Joey Chitwood thrill show, the way he rode that thing on two wheels. Oh, boy, watch this. Precarious is an understatement. Look at Mike Eddy. Did you see Mike Eddy just miss her? Boy, that car had a lot of bite, and he was able to turn just enough, or he would have been the first one to hit her. Well, you know what was good about Mike Eddy's position is he could see Cindy sitting there. Yeah, he had where, that extra half a right, second. Right, where, where uh, uh, Scott and Bob were both behind Mike and each other, and they just had no, right, you know, as soon as Mike moved, there she was, no chance to miss. Well, the good news is everybody is okay. A really, really hard hit here at the season opener for the ASA. Stay with us. We still got more racing to go. Well, there's the mass side on the back stretch as we clean things up here. The season opener for the ASA series. This year, we're starting things off here in Lakeland, Florida, but you know, actually, in 1973, 74, and 75, the ASA Series opened up the previous year in the fall. Salem Speedway. You look at some of the damage that's uh, thrown all over this racetrack. These ASA cars, which can really take a shot. They really can. And what's nice about them is they're fairly rebuildable. I think uh, Rex Robbins and ASA has put together a great series here because you know, that car can run next week. Yeah, for example, you, you've built a lot of cars. Looking at Cindy's Peter, Cindy Peterson's car there, I look at it and go, you know, get me a new one. What do you, that looks fixable, huh? That's absolutely fixable. Uh, you know, it's possible that, that uh, it looks like it's got some front frame damage, but they can put a clip on in a day, all the parts bolt onto that clip, and uh, the body is uh, virtually a one evening piece to put on there. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great race car that can be repaired easily. It's certainly not low cost to run, but but things like that make it a lot lower. Did you, buy, 
Well, go ahead. I'm yeah. Sorry. By the way, did you get a, a look at Bob Seneca's eyes when he got out? When they, when they were doing Bob's interview, that's the that's the Bob Seneca zombie look right there. They, his <laughs> eyes get all glassed over. And I know he's Mr. Nice Guy out of the race car, but when he gets behind that wheel and he starts that motor up, those eyes just glass over. They glass over. That's, that's it. That's huh? it. There's a look J at the Jekyll sneaker. and Hyde. I think probably his eyes are unglassed by now. Now, Butch, we caught him right as he got out of the race car. I'm just wondering what goes through your mind and what do you think of first when you finally land as he did and go, what was that? I don't know. You, you know, you try and drive for a while, but uh, uh, here, look at the replay. Cindy Peterson. Peterson, dead in the water, and all of a sudden. Oh, man. Bob Seneca running in second position, getting up sideways there, launching off Cindy Peterson's Chevrolet. Hanson also involved. He had said he had nowhere to go. Mike Eddy, look at that, all the way down to the bottom. Now, showing, when you showing reactions of a 15-year-old. And a tip of the hat to all the guys behind them, because as they came oh, through yeah. there, there were pieces all over that racetrack and everybody else missed the remaining of the spinning cars he, he was pumping his leg there i wonder if he's not having a brake problem anson down there he wants to take a look at the replay again there's mike now he's not pumping anymore but i saw his left leg moving up and down i think he's a two-footed uh, racer and i wonder see, see he's pumping that brake i don't know what's going on maybe he's got a charlie horse the other country let's check in with dave burns well, I'm standing here with Howard Thomas, and uh, Mike just barely missed all that out there. Howard, did you say anything to you on the radio about that incident? Yeah, he sure did. It was really close. Uh, I really hated to see that for Bob and Scott, you know. It was going to be a heck of a finish, but, you know, it's just one of them racing accidents, and, you know, Bob was so close behind Mike, uh, I'm sure he never even seen her sitting there. And like Mike said, uh, he didn't do that. The good Lord helped him through that one. Well, Howard, now he's got uh, Gary St. Amant bearing down on him from behind. Uh, size up the competition. Brad Loney appeared to get by him earlier. What about St. Amant? Well, I think it'll be a good race to finish. Uh, our car's a little slow getting uh, going at the at the green again, so I don't know. I think once he gets going, possibly he'll be able to hold him off. Cautiously optimistic, Howard Thomas. Well, there's a look at the guy who will now take his shot at Mike Getty. You know, there is a fifth member of our TNN ASA crew. His name is Josh Duvall. Josh's number one job, bringing up the speed on the young racers. Hi, I'm Josh Duvall for the young racers. This week, we're here with Tom Jones, driver of the Zero Machine, and he's also the ASA rookie advisor. Tom, what is it that you do with the rookies? Well, we try to teach them the ins and outs of our ASA racing and uh, try and keep them out of trouble and also give them advice on on uh, just learning to drive in in our circuit and uh, when they have questions to ask they come to me and and they want to know where to run on a racetrack or what should we do today or, or how do we are we in this race or uh, there's just a lot of different questions they ask and and we I try to tell them where the good places on the racetrack are to run where they can get in trouble uh, things like that Thank you, Josh, Tom. Well, things have really shaken up here as far as the rundown is and what Mike Eddy is going to have to deal with. Brad Loney is, at this point in time, uh, on the monitor credited with second, but actually it's Gary St. Amant, and then Loney sits back in third. Jack Landis having a great run. As he sits in uh, fourth, that will probably end up being our highest finishing rookie if things stay the way they are. Tony Rain still inside the top five with a shot of things. So it's Eddie, St. Amant, Loney, Landis, Rain, your top five. Rick Beebe, Joe Knott, Alec Pinsano in eighth. Tony Roper and Mike Kofer having a great run at his first ever ASA race in 10th. Tom Jones, Bob Seneker, Scott Hansen, Dennis Berry, and Cindy Peterson all listed still inside the top 15 to the cars down laps and so forth. Let's go on board now with Gary St. Amant and see what he saw during that crash. Coming off a of turn two, look how, look how blind he was to the crash. Made it through on the very bottom, but you'd see that Brad Loney was to the outside. Loney squeaked by as well. Here's the big one. Look how close Mike Eddy gets here. The camera's in the center of the car, but look how tight that was. 
I bet you he'll be paying up the uh, communion box come Monday, boy. He uh, escaped a close one there. Mike Yeti won the first three races in 1995. Looks like he might start 1996 off the same way. That's the view Roger Slack has of the field as we get set to go back to green flag racing with just 13 laps to go here at the season opener for the AC Delta Challenge Series. You know, I really missed out when when Scott said that he lost his brakes. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to get fired on this deal, but I should have said I need to bring him some Ray Bestus brakes. Nicely done, Butch. You're doing well. Okay, let's check in with Bud Sadamani, who's standing by with uh, Sandy Hang. His boy, Gary, is running well, Sandy. He is running well, but the real question, Bud, is does Gary have what it takes to take it? Yes, yeah, Sandy, I don't know. We're, uh, we've got a pretty good car right now, and uh, we'll just see what Mike does here on this start. But that Pontiac, I imagine the new Pontiacs are probably whiter than what they used to be, especially on the end of the race here like this. So we can get him. So Gary's going to be looking for a window of opportunity. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to try his best. We've heard Gary St. Amant's brake squealing a little bit, Butch, uh, from the in-car camera. Normal? That's that's pretty normal. That happens. I, I, I don't know really what causes it, but in a lot of cases, the brake pad is almost harder than the rotor, and I think it causes a squeal. And by the way, Donna, I hope you're feeling better, honey. Hey, of course, Donna, Mrs. Butch Miller, not here with us tonight. First time I've seen you in a racetrack without her in a long time. Yeah, I know. Well, she's been on the couch for two days, just not feeling good, down with the flu. And uh, happy Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day in a couple days, too, honey. Nicely done again, Butch. Let's Thanks check back there, in Donna. <laughs> Sandy Hang. Smooth, huh? Well, you, you were talking about that squeaky tire. Well, right as uh, you left me, I went and asked Bud, what's the deal with that? Well, they got one of the tires mixed up. Nothing wrong with the brakes. They were able to correct it when they came in the next pit stop, so that's why it went away. All right, thank you, Cindy. That kind of straightens that up. Body panels askew on the left front corner of Brad Loney's car. Maybe we'll be able to get a look at that. I don't know, Butch, if it's in a problem. Looks like he's got some stuff hanging down on the bottom there. Just dragging, huh? Well, I wouldn't tell anybody because I think if ASA sees that, they might do something about it. So, so let's be quiet and not tell anybody. Could okay. work like, could work like a Ben Hurst stick too. Nobody's going to put up next to him. Yeah, their tire right. going down. Oh, look at him squirt around and tuck that thing back under the car. And who said Brad Loney isn't learning fast? All right, Butch, we've got eight laps to go. Mike Eddy's out front. Gary St. Amant, Brad Loney, Jack Landis, and Tony Raines probably all have the best shot at it. Here we go. Hang on. The season opener for the ASA. It's been a great one, and we're winding it down here in Lakeland, Florida. Mike Eddy tries to pull away. St. Amant, Loney, Beebe, and the rest try to keep him within reach. Looks like Mike's car is very strong, however, gentlemen. I don't see him wobbling at all. Looks like the race is for second. Gary St. Amon, the wins for it in second. That's Brad Loney in the new colors of Sprite for this event. Third, car number 33. Great run tonight by all top three runners. Six laps remaining. Can they catch Mike Eddy? That's the question, guys. Boy, Joe Knott took, took advantage of, uh, of a bad situation down there. Three car is dragging some parts, Dan. What do you think? Well, just talked with Kurt Beckler, his crew chief, and Brad ran over something in that last incident on the back stretch. Shouldn't be a problem uh, for the remainder of the race, though. Okay, so that sets things up for Brad Loney. There's the battle on behind that fourth, fifth, and sixth. Joey not trying to catch Tony Raines, who's trying to catch Jack Landis. Uh, a couple of laps down, but still in the middle of this. Landis holds on to fourth. Reigns right behind him in fifth. Reigns trying to win a championship. Landis trying to win the Rookie of the Year award. So that, points that battle, very important to both of these guys. That battle for second is looking awful good. Well, there are great battles all over this racetrack. 
think Brad's brave enough to give him a little tap if he can get up there? Boy, we're going to find out as Tony Raines tries the inside of Landis. It'll be two laps to go next time across the stripe. Landis bobbles in three. Here comes Raines. Two to go. So Reigns locks in now solidly into fourth. Mike Eddy, meanwhile, he won the first three races of 1995. He's still looking for an unprecedented eighth national championship in the ASA series. Nobody in professional stock car racing has won eight national titles. Mike Eddy trying to do so in 96. On his way to his first win and a great way to kick off that campaign. Down the back stretch, Mike Eddy about to christen the brand new 96 Pontiac in ASA with its first win here in the season opener in Lakeland, Florida. Gary St. Amand comes home in second. Brad Loney gets credited with third. Tony Rains is fourth. Jack Landis will be the highest finishing rookie with a tremendous fifth place effort. Well, what do you think, Butch? He's trying for eight titles. I, he could get eight easily, too. You know, it's, it's, uh, it amazes me how you can run 300 laps, and then the end of the race, there's a half a second between the top three cars. It just, it just amazes me how that can happen. And, Gary, uh, Gary St. Amant brings a squeaky brake, so the number seven wins Ford in the victory lane. We'll be back to wrap it up as we open up the can of worms known as the AC Delco Challenge Series season. We are back to Lakeland, Florida, where we've opened up the season. Mike Eddy gets the first win. Let's go right down to Dave Burns with the big winner. Well, Mike Eddy uh, came from a lot going on out there on the track tonight. You missed about everything. Uh, it looked like there was a lot of things for you to steer around tonight. Yeah, um, uh, that last incident there when uh, Cindy spun out, uh, Boy, I really don't know how I missed her. I come out of the corner and she was right in front of me and uh, I swore I was gonna hit her, but the good Lord must have been with us because uh, uh, we made it around. Well, Mike, did you have a perfect car tonight or did you have one that you worked well with? Well, uh, no, our car was far from perfect tonight. Uh, well, the car was good. Uh, our tires kept changing sizes and uh, we chased that all night and chased it all night. And uh, finally we got the plan when there's double yellows, get all four and uh, it paid off. All right, Mike Eddy wraps up a victory here at the first ever ASA race at Lakeland Speedway. So Mike Eddy gets the big win. Here's a look at your field rundown. Eddy, of course, your winner. Gary St. Amant gets second. Loney third. Tony Raines is in fourth. Landis, the highest finishing rookie, comes home in fifth. Some big points in there for a lot of people. Joey Nunn, Rick Beebe, Alec Pinsano, his Career best, best finish ever. By far. Tony Roper and Tom Jones. Good to see Tony Roper in the top ten. He has a, a good start to the season. He's looking for some sponsors, looking for to turn it around from last year. How about Mike Kofer coming home in 11? Dennis Berry finishes up 12th. Ted Smokestad, John O'Neill, Bob Seneca credited where he started 15th. Followed by Hanson, Peterson, Miscott, and Sharp, and Cadman. Good to see all those folks in that big incident getting out okay. Here's your winner. Two-way communication.